Hello, and welcome to the Holocron cast. I am your Jedi Holocron, Tyler, here with my co-host, the local Sith Holocron, Dan. How you doing, Dan? Pretty alright. And I am a new Dan. A new Continuing Dan. Continuing that theme. A new Dan. So, so, are we talking about New Hope today, Dan? Unfortunately, no. It doesn't line up that way. No. It's going to line up perfectly odd. And I like that. It's going to line up exactly three behind. The real question is... What are you going to do when... So you're, like, skipping Solo and Rogue One, just doing the nine? Yeah. Because okay, it's episode sense. one, two, three, etc. So when you, like... I'm not going to be, like... It's not going to be, like, episode five, and I'm going to be, like... And it's me, Rogue Dan. That doesn't make sense. You're going to do that for our Mandalorian review, because we're going Rogue on that one. We are going Rogue on that one. That'll be our first content that's not the Holocron cast, so you should be, like... Spoilers! <laughs> so, Dan... We we're, weren't sure what to talk about this week, but I have a plan going forward. So, embarking on a journey, if you will. We're going on a journey. We're going on the road to Skywalker for the next, pretty much every week, I think. If I haven't really done the math, but <laughs> <laughs> until Rise of Skywalker, we will be reviewing, discussing, and just full out spoiler casting, and just going over every Star Wars film in the Skywalker saga, plus the Solo and Rogue One. Yes. All of the canon Star Wars movies. No Ewok special, no holiday special. Just all the canon ones, not counting the Clone Wars movie. Right. Yeah, I would like to do Clone Wars and stuff. We could, honestly, we could do an episode about Clone Wars Rebels and just not rewatch it, you know. We could. Probably not, but we're just going to do the that, movies. That's now. long-term goals. Yeah, we don't have time for that. This is just about the Skywalker saga right now anyway. Yeah. So we're going to go right into that. So every week, we're going to be doing that. This week... We have... Gotta start from the beginning. The Phantom Menace. We will be going chronologically. Yes, so chronological order. 1, 2, 3, Solo, Rogue One, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep. That makes the most sense in this instance. Yeah. I w- this is not how you should watch the movies if this is your Obviously. first time watching. Obviously, release order is how you should watch them, but... You agree with that, right? You release order. You release order. You don't have no confetti or what's it called? Machete order. Machete order. Confetti order. Confetti <laughs> order. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling it confetti order exclusively. Some like the only thing I could kind of see the argument for is maybe do Rogue One before four. Yes. No, that, but because it, it leads right into four. Yeah. There's not any like spoilers in it or anything. I guess you're right. There's nothing like. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. There's it doesn't already... ruin any of the reveals from. It also will make you fear Vader really bad right away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's already people that have had this debate endlessly about what's the true best order nowadays. Yeah, but you don't want to watch Solo first, for sure. You, yeah, you definitely don't want to watch Solo first. Is that first? one you could technically watch before the prequels? And True. But also, that's not a good place to start. <laughs> no, but small. You gotta watch prequels before that. Yeah, you gotta watch prequels before that. Yeah, so, Rogue One, release order. Yeah, those are the only Rogue two. Rogue One ones. and then release order. Yeah, or just release order. Those are the only two options, I say. I forgot what Machete Order does. There's machete no, like, Machete Order out. is you do, if I remember correctly, okay. I, don't yeah. don't rip me to shreds if I get this wrong, yeah, I'm not but I believe the Machete Order was 4, 5, 2, 3, 6. And, and you just seven eight. Yeah, and then seven eight. You cut one out. Completely. You skip one and you do four five to set up like the universe and get the I am your father reveal. And then you do two three to see like the rise of the Empire, and then six to see its fall, and then you just continue from there. I believe that's the machete order. I could be a little off. We don't know what the additions of Rogue One and Solo Two will how it's changed. Yeah, yeah. It. I, I don't think that counts in the machete order. That's more of like an older thing. Yeah. Machete order it's always weird how there's so many different orders of Star Wars and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse the, uh... Yeah, okay, Dan. <laughs> we're going to start off this with Phantom Menace, obviously. We're talking about the Phantom Menace. When was the first time you watched the Phantom Menace? What did you first experience with it? What do you remember? See, when the Phantom Menace came out, I was two at the time. <laughs> so I do not quite remember the first time I ever watched it. However, I do know, because I was the intended audience for the film... I liked it. Because <laughs> it was aimed at kids. Oh, yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. It was aimed at me. I liked it. So you liked it when the first time you saw it? Absolutely. Yeah? Without a doubt. Okay. Because, you know, it was back in the day, I'm sure the effects astounded me. Like, I was <laughs> blown away. Because keep in mind, you know, this is little three-year-old Dan yeah. just sitting there like, 
oh, battle droid! <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm sure I loved it. Yeah. Where were you in Coney 2012? Coney 2012. I don't really recall the first experience I've had with it. Like I said, I don't remember the first time I watched it, honestly. But I think I watched two first. I could see that. I remember seeing two in theaters, but I think... I don't. I honestly don't remember the first experience yeah. of this movie. It's because, like I said, I was a kid when it came out. I was like six or seven. And, yeah, it was just... I didn't see... I don't know if I saw it right away or not. And, yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think of it when you were young? Because I know you liked two. Yeah, two has a weird special place in my heart because I've watched that way too many times. But that's for next week. That, yeah, that discussion's um, for next week. I don't honestly remember... <laughs> Just, just, I'm sure I liked it fine because I liked one. I mean, I like two and three. I think I saw two or three first. So I'm sure I liked it. That's a weird order. Yeah. Like we said, confetti order. Um, yeah. <laughs> confetti order. We don't need it. That's the confetti order. That's you confetti start order. with two. <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six, one. Right? Yeah. You gotta watch one last. No, I watched one before I watched four and five, though, and six. Just, uh, just as a simple side note, because... The, this thing, the mic does pick up noises that are closer to the mic, a lot louder. So just to be sure that the paper rustling isn't overpowering you talking. <laughs> just wanted to say that real quick. Okay. Also, just so we don't get comments being like, what the fuck is that sound? We're recording during a tornado. It's obvious. Yeah. Where we live in Kansas, there's a tornado every day. Is that how that works? Kansas. Tornado Alley, baby. So, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Dan. Phantom Menace and the prequels in general are super controversial, right? As I like to call the Phantom Menace specifically, C-SPAN in space. C-SPAN in space. C-SPAN? That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Is it C-SPAN? I always want to say C. C letter dash yeah. spawn. S-P-A-N. Spawn. I always want to say C-SPEC, but I think that's a Mass Effect thing. Yeah, that sounds like some <laughs> other space stuff going on there. Dan, this movie's, in a way, is very... Very controversial. I want to say it's controversial, but because I think most people agree when they say this movie is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely one of those movies that has aged incredibly poorly. But also, the initial response at the time was pretty poor, too. True. People, I just remember pe- hearing stories about people convincing themselves they liked this movie because they, they, wanted, to love they the wanted to love it so bad. And a lot of people you know, were disappointed when it came out. Oh, like yeah. That. I'm sure when it first came out, I'm sure my father was disappointed. Yeah. You, you, you should have asked him about it. I should have. Though, to be fair, I think my dad's favorite is episode three. That's... It's either three or eight is my dad's favorite. And he was a day one fan, so. Yeah. Interesting. But he's liked all the new stuff. He's not a not a purist or not anything. A purist. Yeah. Um... Thank God. <laughs> Dan, this movie... Is pretty bad. Pretty bad. But the, everybody knows that. Yeah. We're going to go through the movie, go through the plot, talk about things we like, things we don't. But first, we're going to talk about just the movie in general, its history with Star Wars. Like, what did what it, it mean? Did. Because this movie is kind of, Strange. for its time, is kind of revolutionary. Oh, yeah. For 1999, having the effects it did. That's the thing people got to keep in mind. This movie came out in 1999. Yeah. Of course it looks like shit now. The effects hold up poorly. Really bad. Massively poor. We just watched it for reference. Yeah, mainly because, of course we were watching We have to. We had to do proper I was just making sure that we said it. We just rewatched it. Are you trying to say we're not a trustworthy podcast who does not research (laughs) and cite our sources, Dan? I was just verifying. Verifying. Okay. But yeah, revolutionary for a time. Like, in 1999, people were probably... Blown they're, away. Probably they're, they're, it blew up their skirt, if you know what I'm saying. It blew their... <laughs> blew their skirt up, you know? Blew their skirt up, you know? Goddamn. Gotta, Hell yeah. Gotta call back my catchphrase now. That's my thing now. Yeah. Yeah? I'm trying to insert that. But yeah. 1999. That's what one thing, no matter what you think of the prequels, and even the original trilogy, what both those movies did for cinema at the time... Were very... Were revolutionary. Huge. Yeah. Like... This is the first movie that's, like, mostly CGI. Yeah. For not, better or worse. Yeah, for better or worse. Like, George Lucas, 
I think made some of this technology. George Lucas is kind of a psychopath. Yeah, he's the he wanted um everything to be everything CG, to be the which, actors, which, everything. In my opinion, at that point, just make a fucking cartoon. Clone right. Wars looks great. I'd rather you hand draw something beautiful than yeah. a CGI fuckfest. Like Clone Wars looks great. Rebels yeah. looks great. Resistance looks good. Resistance <laughs> looks okay. <laughs> that looks alright. It's good. It's not bad. It's just not. Gassi and HD though, Disney Plus coming. We'll to be fair, HD. yeah, we've only seen two episodes, so maybe it gets like really better as it goes along. Yeah. But yeah, Phantom Menace. It has an interesting legacy in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> I think it's we can rightfully say it's closely the agreed upon worst movie. Yes. If you don't count the Clone Wars animated film. Yes. Or the Christmas special or, or the Ewok anything movies. that's not canon. Of all the canon things, yeah. it is largely agreed upon that. Phantom Menace and 2 usually share the spotlight at the bottom. Yeah. And then if people are... True psychopaths. True psychopaths, they include the Clone Wars movie on their list, and that's always last. I was going to say, if they were true psychopaths, they put Last Jedi below the Phantom Menace. Oh, no, those people are nuts. That's just wrong. I don't think it's possible. I don't think C-SPAN is more entertaining than anything else. I don't think it's possible to make... I don't think in Star Wars ever again... We'll have a movie worse than the prequels. Worse the first than two. yeah, worse than the first two. And we and who knows if we'll have a movie better than Empire because that's top tier. Yeah, Empire Empire as a movie is the best movie of the Star Wars universe. We just personally have different favorites. Yeah, but I think as a film, like as a movie itself, Empire is like the highest bar of the franchise ever. Yeah, if you can if you can love the fact that they'll never be worse than the prequels and never as amazing as the original trilogy, as in like. You have a fun time. Yeah, you can always have fun with the, all of them. Yeah. Like I said, like I don't like, know how anyone can dis, like hate the new movies after the prequels. Especially <laughs> especially after The Phantom Menace. This movie, I hadn't watched it since before 8. Because I, we like to watch them leading up to each movie. All yes. Of them. And I was bored on my mind watching this movie. <laughs> we both kept kind of looking at our phones. and I was taking notes and stuff, and I'm like... There's not... There, oh, there's a few cool scenes in the movie. Like I said, we're going to go through the plot in a minute. And... I wanted to go into this saying that we aren't just going to spend, you know, two hours just ripping on it. We're going to do a lot of ripping. We're going to do a lot of ripping. Don't you, get me wrong, because we... No talk, one can say that this movie is good. Yeah, objectively bad. You can't talk about this movie without criticizing it anyway. Yes, it's not a great film. However, I think it is important to say the stuff that was good, because I feel like most people just rip on it endlessly. Yeah, because... There is some good stuff. There are a couple nuggets of good in there. Yeah. In theory, this movie could have been great. In practice, no. Yeah. It, it was a pretty decent concept. Yeah. They focused a little bit it's too much on the make, trade. It's hard to make taxes fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to make paying taxes and tax disputes fun. Especially after the original trilogy. Yeah, which is interesting, too, because like, po- like politics in Star Wars can be really good. They can be. I, like... Especially, like, I love exploring the politics of Star Wars. Just, just you, you've got to, you know, prequels just didn't do enough right to justify us dealing yeah. with the bad politics. The problem is, is I think, I think what, like, from looking at it, I think what the goal was was to establish the politics so that Palpatine's rise to power makes more sense. Yeah. The problem is, is that it's so boring. It's just people talking in a Senate. <laughs> It's not an, it's not entertaining. Yeah. Like the idea of like I feel like politics have to be there for the story they're trying to tell Palpatine, which is an interesting story. It just executed poorly by like the British Parliament of all the fucking giant <laughs> all the giant things. circle thing. Like, I think that design is kinda cool. Yeah, I like the set like how it looks, but like I don't know. It's just but, rough. Yeah. It's executed very rough is the main It's like the opposite of British Parliament. Of everyone like yelling each at each other and like it's chaos. It's just like super calm and like we're going to talk now. I am the queen of Naboo. I talk <laughs> like a fucking robot. Which honestly, we'll get to later. But I we'll get to I, acting later. Yeah, but I don't have. That's actually the only acting I don't have a problem with. <laughs> Amidala. Yeah, and Obi Wan. Well, yeah, Obi Wan. Amidala makes sense, but we'll talk. We'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, well, this movie. It really it the one thing that this movie does add a lot of to the franchise, and it's one of the biggest defense that I one of the biggest defensive points I've seen brought up by people who defend the prequels, myself included, 
is that it is a lot of world building. Yes. It sets up the universe in a much bigger scope than we had ever really seen before. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because we pretty much only, like, the original trilogy is just from, like, pretty much the Falcon's perspective. Yeah, you don't, we don't explore as many planets in the original trilogy, right? Yeah, there's really not too, too many planets that you go to. I mean... We really don't go to that many in this movie. To be fair, yeah, I was about to say, we spend, like, almost this entire movie on Naboo. And then Coruscant. And Coruscant a little bit. Yeah. Naboo, Tatooine, Coruscant. So you got, like, three, so not a whole lot of planet exploration, but a lot of, like... World building, establishing, you know, they bring up the how the huts rule, the outer rim worlds, and mm-hmm. the Galactic Republic controls ev- like pretty much everything else. It's a lot of like neat little touches that are just boringly executed <laughs> <laughs> with yeah. terrible direction, terrible. It's <laughs> George Lucas should have let someone else write the scripts. Or just let, or just let the actors actually have emotion. Right. Honestly, though, I think this might. I haven't watched two and three in a while. But wait, the acting in this one's not awful. Like Obi Wan's good. Well, Qui Gon's Obi- good. Obi Wan's always been immune to it. Yeah, he's. Ewan McGregor's been immune to that acting thing with yeah. Lucas for some reason the whole time. I don't think Qui Gon's bad. Qui Gon's not bad, but I don't think he was particularly like. Mind blowing. Yeah, well, I just think that's his character. But I really like his character. I just feel like it was more of like, I mean, in comparison to the rest of the roles in the film, he was definitely better. But yeah, I do. Yeah. I think it's also because the movie focuses a lot on not necessarily like a smaller cast, but like like as you said, we'll explain later. The Padme thing kind of makes sense for acting. Yeah, and but- then. And we don't spend that much time with the small council, the Jedi Council, so we really don't. Yeah, we don't experience them much. We don't have too much to go off of with everybody else, really. I think it's really kind of the main thing. You can't complain about Darth Maul's acting because he only said two lines. And they weren't even voiced by the guy who was playing Maul. <laughs> really? Yeah, I didn't realize that. Uh, me and uh, me and James got into a, a discussion about that a while ago. He was like, so who voiced him in episode one then? And I was like, the, Ray Park, the guy playing him? And he was like, no, I know it's someone else, but it's not Sam Witwer. Because he voices Maul in Clone Wars and stuff. But it's a different guy who voices him in one. Why? He only says two lines. I don't know. What? I did not know this. It's some other dude. I'm sorry. I don't know the name. (laughs) But it's some other guy. Yeah, but there's only people I ever associate with Maul is Ray Park and Whitwer. Yeah, because Ray Park's the body. Whitwer's the voice. Yeah. And that's when they're perfect together. They're they're a true symbiotic relationship. They work together in harmony. Ray Park's movements with Sam Whitwer's vocals... Right. Beautiful. Clone Wars Season 7, baby. Can't wait. Whoa! Woo! Okay. So, anything else to say about the, the, the impact? Movie, the impact of the movie? It definitely, I think, I do think this movie is where we can pinpoint where the Star Wars fandom started to become toxic. Most definitely. <laughs> this is the moment. I was, I forgot, I was listening to something, and apparently there was a George Lucas, after the reviews of this movie came out, I forgot where I heard this at, but I heard this somewhere. Um, he was, like, attacking reviewers and calling them idiots. Really? He's like, he, I don't remember the direct quote or where I heard this from, but he's like, the cinema, people who, like, he was, like, calling the people who reviewed this movie, gave it bad reviews, calling movie critics dumb, and he was just going to town on that. I'm like... That's a great decision. To be fair, George Lucas was kind of, like... A psychopath? He is a psychopath, but he was, like, once the prequels come out, he clearly was on decline. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he didn't direct four, or he didn't direct five and six, I mean. Yeah, it's true. He, like... Maybe he, he shouldn't direct, yeah. He Well, obviously he shouldn't have directed the prequels, because the only one that's considered to be good is rumored to not even be directed by him. Yeah, but that's... That's a discussion for two weeks. We're gonna get really into that. We're gonna get really into we're that gonna, theory. We're gonna find theories, find facts. But yeah, that's... Yeah. George Lucas, interesting fella. <laughs> interesting guy. Glad he sold Star Wars. I gotta, you know, I gotta have some respect for him. He created my favorite franchise of all time. He's, he's a little bit of a weird guy, though. What is it with people making some of our favorite franchises named George? <laughs> we got George Lucas, we got George Railroad Martin, and we got the Georges, man. Two of my got favorite the two Georges. in the world. Fucking George. The double George. So does that mean I gotta name my, cord- my kid George? Even if it's a girl, yes. Yes, yeah, so he can On be- record now, it's on the internet. 
Oh, shit. I will hold you to it. Do not worry, internet. I'm sorry, future wife, for this. <laughs> <laughs> your, your daughter comes out, and you're just like, George! Georgia. George Railroad. No, name, name her Georgia. No, but her middle name is Railroad. No matter what my kid's name is, <laughs> middle middle name name is Railroad. Railroad. George Railroad. Not saying my last name on the air yet. <laughs> <laughs> Smith. Smith. Williams. <laughs> yeah, whatever are the most like generic what? last um, names. Baker. That seems like a generic last name. <laughs> I don't know if I know a single person with the last name Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think there's anything else important. Like, like I said, this is like it's weird though to think about as well because this one is kind of like justified as to why the community got so toxic because it is such a huge. Stark... It was such a huge letdown because you never think you're gonna get Star Wars again. Twenty years later, you're like Star Wars is back, and it's episode, and it's episode one. One, and you're like, what is going on? There, it's a prequel. Pigros are already dangerous. Territory. Territories, and you're like, what is happening? So, I, I, people, it's hard to not been let down by this movie. Yes. But people also need to be nicer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Some people go a little too hard. All right, yeah. You don't have to like the movie, just don't yell at actors about it. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll have a discussion about that, like, for sure. Oh, yeah. A few there, actors in this with, franchise got totally two, fucked over. Two people specifically got really fucked. And, Unjustly so. And that's terrible. We should have fucking George Lucas. <laughs> no, no fucking anyone. No, George Lucas deserves it. <laughs> I don't know if that's something you want to say. Because it's his fault. No, he doesn't deserve it, but you if you're gonna yell at anyone, yell at him. Because don't ruin two people's lives because George Lucas gave horrible direction. True. I just think nobody should have their lives ruined over fiction. Yes. Personally. <laughs> right. That, that that yeah. Anytime anybody goes after the like the actor, the actors, or even even if they just go after like the director, you don't have to like it. But goddamn, you don't need to attack people over it. Right. For Christ's sake. Fucking Christ's sake. Okay, Dan. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about the plot. Okay, Dan. So right after, so Star Wars is renowned for having great opening scenes. We should have had the crawl ready. We should have. But Star Wars is renowned for having great opening scenes. The attack on the Tantive Four. At the beginning of A New Hope. Hoth at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back. Jabba the Hutt's palace with Han's rescue at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Episode 1, Trade Negotiations. Boom. Get your taxes ready. Let's do them. Where's your C-span. 401k at, baby? Let's figure out why the taxes and tariffs are so high so we can get this show on the road. Right from the beginning, <laughs> it's already disappointing. We got our boy Newt. Eggshell Eyes Gunray. One of the most racist characters created by man. Yeah, New Gunray. He would not fly today. He is pretty much... That's another reason to look at George Lucas. Like, why are you make like... Everyone's a stereotype. Everyone's like a racist stereotype. All the movie. aliens in this movie, every alien in this movie is a racist stereotype. With New Gunray being a Asian racist stereotype. <laughs> at first it's not as bad, and then he starts talking more, you're like, what the fuck? You're like, this what, is bad. What is happening? This is real bad. What? <laughs> no, Lucas, please. No. Like it was, it was. It's so weird. Yeah, it's one of those things that as a kid I never picked up on. Right. You know, I, I just never as a thought kid, about, you it. Think about it. But yeah. But it's so obvious and so oh. like like like. To be fair, I think the biggest problem with it is that it just it doesn't fit. What taxes or no. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the the whole like like stereotypical Asian man thing? It doesn't yeah. really fit. It's probably because yeah, I don't know. It really doesn't. Like you know, I don't know what he's it, going. Because it's, it's not like it's trying. It's not like it's trying to be like a commentary on anything. It's yeah. just he wanted stereotypes to be his alien. <laughs> like what? What is he trying to say with? I don't get it. Did he just think it was a cool idea to have him speak in broken English the whole movie? It was 1999, he probably thought it was cool. <laughs> because, I mean, because we, as we know, based on Lucas's ideas for the <laughs> sequel trilogy, not a smart man. Not fun <laughs> ideas. He doesn't have fun ideas anymore. He used his, like, one fun idea. Yeah. Then, Re- remember back in the day... almost threw it into the ground. Remember back in the day when he used to love doing practical effects? <laughs> like an empire? <laughs> when they made little models for all the AT-ATs? 
Right? They're doing that for Mandalorian. Yeah. And they all look so good. They still right. look good. Right. Okay. So that's another topic, though. We're doing taxes. We're doing taxes. That's the start of the movie. Already off to a bad start. Obi Wan and Qui Gon are here for the. They were sent by Chancellor Valorum to discuss the blockade over Naboo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, like, trade laws or trade blockade. They were, I guess, put an embargo around the planet or something. Yeah. It. And I guess Jedi are just sent to do this just because. Because there's too many of them. Though. They got nothing to do. Because they couldn't send, like, Republic guards or, you know, part of their military. Right. <laughs> they had to be like, oh, hey, can you just send two Jedi over there? Right. And then. And that's really what sparks everything. Yeah. And then stuff goes awry. They realize. Something's up. Something's up. Nudie boy and Nudie the other boy. guy don't want to go and even see them. Yeah, because they're getting messages from Palpatine. Darth Sidious, Darth please. Sidious. It hasn't been revealed yet. It hasn't been revealed yet. And they're like, okay. And then they they get real. They know they don't realize that they're there. And thus we get into our first little lightsaber duels. They start knocking out B one. I almost called them royal guards. Royal guards. They start knocking out clankas. B one battle droids who in this movie sound a little weird. Very different from the normal voice. Yeah. Not necessarily a bad thing, just an well, interesting... Just the original voice, everything else is weird, you know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I like the other one better, though. Right? What, happen- what, what happens next, Dan? Something interesting happens that we've never seen before, and I don't think we ever see it again. No, we've never seen it since. Um, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon use Force Speed. Which is like... Kind uh, of like a, a juke, kind of? They just, like, they just basically zipped off to the side, because... Because Obi-Wan said, Master, destroy us! And Droidicas rolled up behind them. Obi-Wan doesn't know they're called Droidicas, apparently. And and then they just fucking go at, like, the speed of sound and just zip away. Yeah. Why is this power not used more? It's not that cool. But it's useful! Yeah, it's useful. It's it's always weird when we only see, like, a Force ability used once. I think that's the only one that's used, like, once. Well, as of... Yeah, as of now. As of now. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's other ones that we'll use once, but I'm sure they'll be revisited. Yeah. Well, I want them to revisit Force Speed. I honestly don't care. But it it's a useful power. It is. That is established. It'd be cool to see again. And Obi-Wan... Oh, we never see it again? No, it's okay. And Obi-Wan is a Padawan and can do it. Right. That's pretty cool. So it's a pretty easy move to do. That just really irks me. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It could be explored more, but I... Don't care. So, and then they're... <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care. It's cool. They always like, use it as a move in video games, at least. There you go. Maybe the baby Cal will use it. I was thinking, like, because in the, in the gameplay, it looks like Cal, like, leaps forward. It kind of looks like four speed a little. Hmm. But, yeah, it, it's a little weird. But, anyway, the destroyers come up. The, you know, also known as the Chad robots. <laughs> Whereas the B1s are shredded like nothing. You make a Jedi Master and Apprentice run away with two Droidicas. <laughs> Them shields, baby. Them shields, dude. They, they can make, they may be able to flex bullets back at them, but they, they got blocking ready. Yeah, they're, they, they're just turtling, basically. <laughs> they're just prepared for their worst enemy. It's really, the Jedi. Droidicas are also pretty underused. Yeah. Just in the they could win, like, every fight if they just had Droidicas. Yeah. <clears throat> so after this, they escape the... They escape the, the, um, the Lucre Hulk battle station. Is that Newt Gunray's, like, capital ship, pretty much? That's the model of ship. It's called a... I don't know Newt's specific one's name, but that the big circle with the big ball in the middle, that is called a Lucre Hulk battle station. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is I've bigger... There's only, like, three Star Destroyers that are bigger than it. Snoke's, Vader's, and probably, like, one other one that I'm not remembering. That thing's fucking huge. Hell yeah, it is. And then we get probably... I assume it's a, I assume it's a CG shot, but a, some really gorgeous shots in Naboo. Naboo was the one thing that aged very well. Not every shot of Naboo, but no. Like, <laughs> but the couple of shots that did age well aged pretty damn well. Naboo's always been a really beautiful city slash planet slash area. Out, outside of that one shot where you see Anakin like in, like near the end of the movie when he flies up and it's just like a flat green zone underneath. <laughs> that looked a little weird, but other than that, Naboo looks pretty good. Right? Yeah. I don't know why the rest of the movie didn't look that good, but... What? <laughs> I was just saying. Yeah. Okay, then... We both paused for the other one to talk and then no one talked. Right. Then, do we go straight to... After that, Misa, uh, Misa? we go straight to meeting Mr. Binks. Mr. Jaja Binks. 
this is like the moment where I feel most Star Wars fans watching at day one, this is where their heart broke. You already have him. He's speaking broken English throughout the whole movie. You can't even understand. Like, even the subtitles don't know what he's saying. <laughs> the the subtitles didn't help at all. Right. He, and Qui-Gon saves him, tackles him to the ground, and then delivers a great fucking burn on him. One of my favorite lines of this movie, which is, The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. That's such a great line. <laughs> such a good burn. Yeah, it's kind of mean, but I like it. Qui-Gon's such a savage. Sassy boy. He's a real sassy boy. So, and then, you know, Jar Jar in his broken ass English is like, I owe you a life debt because you saved my life from that tank that was going to run me over. Apparently, Jar Jar just wouldn't have ducked and just would have died there. It would have saved us all a lot of trouble. Palpatine would have never came into control. Without Jar Jar. Yeah. Also. We'll get to that discussion in episode three. Also, you know, I forgot my thought. <laughs> they, they never would have had two. You, they would never have deal with Jar Jar. They never would have had two poop jokes. There's two poop jokes in this movie. There's the time that the horse thing farts in Jar Jar's face right before the pod race, oh, okay. and then he steps then in he the steps literal in pile I of forgot, poo. I forgot about this. Actually, that might be the moment where it broke people. This is the movie where you just knew Star Wars if it was for kids. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. The poop problem jokes. is... The problem is poop jokes are... Really never funny. really good. Right. <laughs> poop jokes are the hardest form of comedy to make actually entertaining, to the point where I don't think it's ever worth it. Right. Name a good poop joke. Yeah, there's like... There's like three. I don't know them, but I'm sure there's three of them. I'm sh- yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure there's at least one good shit joke out there. And this is where we get... We're starting to learn more about the people. We see Uda Gunga. Uda Gunga. Wait, the name that? of their city. Uda, yeah, okay. And their leader... Boss Nass. Boss Nass. What a guy. What an absolute G. You think this guy is a... He's a... He's a, he's he's just he's just a funny dude. He's like he likes to do that thing all the time. What's the thing he does? <laughs> he does that a lot. He speaks broken English too. That's the that's the natural Gungan character trait. <laughs> Everyone Qui-Gon. has their signature thing. They all speak broken English, but they all have their thing. Boss Nass is the mouth thing. Jar Jar is dumb. Incomp is being successful incompetently. He's fucking up, but somehow gets stuff done. And Newt Gunray is Asian. <laughs> No. <laughs> also broken English. And then, you know, you have Qui-Gon basically just mindfuck Boss Nass. Oh, yeah. Qui-Gon mind tricks Boss Nass. Three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we could really use a transport. That's one of my favorite things about Qui-Gon throughout this movie, is how he's he's like a Jedi. He's supposed to be like, follow these strict rules, be this like heroic figure, like, do things, and he's constantly tricking people probably when he's He's super me. gray. He yeah. hates the council. But she, is that frowned upon by Jedi? Because I know they do that, mind trick people, but like, that seems like something that would be very against their the way Qui-Gon, moral standards. The way Qui-Gon does it would be frowned upon. Okay. Most In most cases, Jedi would typically use it more for, like, defense. Yeah. Like Obi-Wan when he gets caught by the stormtroopers. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Yeah. He didn't really gain anything out of that. He just got the stormtroopers to leave him alone. Mm-hmm. Qui-Gon uses it to get Boss Nass to give him a ship. Yeah, it's for personal gain. Yeah. And then he also keeps using the Force to get more advantages by moving Watto's chance cube to make sure it lands on Anakin and not Shmi. I guess fuck you, Shmi. So it's, you know, Qui-Gon loves to use the Force in the way that he sees fit. And that's why the Council hates him. He's not allowed on the Council. Yeah, it's true. He isn't. Which is a sad time because Qui-Gon deserves to be there. He's Qui-Gon's pretty good. He's pretty good. We also get our first shot of the, um, coming up on our the the what's the ship called the cool the, silver ship the the Nubian yacht the Nubian yacht yeah we, we that can s- run a blockade <laughs> <laughs> the thing just zips out there like there's no problem yeah you know there's not really a blockade there I like, guess how did, how did it get out you know? oh but another thing we forgot to discuss uh going backtracking a little bit before we met Jar Jar a little bit of a little rant I gotta get on the sim- oh yeah yeah this, the we- Trade Federation in this movie is absolutely moronic. Just like every normal government. Yes. Their blockade is right in front of the capital. But when they land their attack ships on the planet, they go to the other side. Because Qui-Gon and them go through the planet's core to get to the capital. Right. So, why... You're blockading the place! Why would you send your forces to the other side of the planet? You're just defeating the purpose. You're like, what are you doing? Like, 
they don't they don't have an explanation either. It's not like oh there are other cities we got to capture over there. It just looks like swamp. Right. That pisses me off. Isn't it like what that what they're trying to yeah? You know, what's the point of Lock Cave? You're just gonna move to the back. Yeah. Like isn't that that was what started the dispute? And now you're just like oh I'm gonna move over there. Just gonna well it, it, they didn't even move their ships over there. They just moved all their attack crafts, just circled <laughs> the planet, and landed back there. I get landing a bit of a ways away from the capital, but on the other side of the fucking planet. Dan, you know what they say, though? Sometimes the best offense is a super overprotective, way too soft defense. And that's what they did there. They're like, we're going to get as far away as we back so we don't lose. <laughs> and then they lost then they anyway. Lose. Gee. And then they inevitably bring all their troops to the capital anyway. Right. Like, oh my, I just don't understand it. It is. To be fair, Lucas, I'm sure, didn't really have a tactical bone in his body. No. (laughs) I'm I'm sure that was the last thought on his mind. The tactics of, and the military (laughs) operations. No. Most things fail to show those well on a show. True. But most of them aren't quite that dumb. Yeah. But anyway, to get back to where we were in the plot, the, uh, they free the queen. She was being held captive. Yes. By battle droids. They took them out instantly in very not great action scene. No, we haven't had a great action scene yet this, up to this point. The, on, the only issue with the... Like, the action scenes would be okay if it was, like, stormtroopers or, like, someone was actually there. It just looks so weird because the B-1 battle droids are so obviously CG. Imagine filming that where you're just, like... Just spinning around against nothing. It's just like the broom kid who's pretending to be Star Wars, you know? Pretending to be Star Wars. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's very weird. And then, you, of course, you have Jar Jar falling off the bridge yeah. to make... And they also, at this point, they're getting ready to leave, right? Yeah, they're and, about to go onto their StarCraft. And then they're like, oh shit, Jar Jar. <laughs> the, it, it looks like Jar Jar is going to be in trouble, maybe even die, <clears throat> be imprisoned or something. Oh, you're going way back, back to Boss Nass. Oh, yeah. Wait, what did, what did we skip? I thought that's where we were. No, we were at them freeing Padme. Oh, yeah. Well, they take Jar Jar with them, too, because, like, I guess they didn't want him to die. They got nothing, because they... Wait, we, did we talk about that? No. Oh, okay. We just said how Qui-Gon just mind-fucked Boss Nass into yeah. getting a ship. And then they apparently kept, let Jar Jar come with them, because his fate wasn't good on Naboo. Because he, because he owed Qui-Gon a life debt, and their gods yeah. demanded mm-hmm. that he become his servant. And then they get to the capital, free Padme, get on their silver craft, and run the blockade like it was Sunday lunch. And then they get back on the ship and head back to. They had they had to. They're on the boo. The free time. This also this also gets me to one of my weird things. Rants. When Padme goes with them on the ship. Yeah, Padme Amidala. They introduce her as Padme, right? The, yeah, the, like the, the handmaiden Padme. The handmaiden Padme. With the fake decoy, Queen Amidala. Yeah, because there's Queen Amidala and there's Padme. They're the same person. Padme is the queen. But no one knows that until the end of the movie. And in this scene, they call her Padme. And her name is Padme Amidala. And she's Queen Amidala. She, and she's a 16-year-old girl who got elected somehow to the Senate of Naboo. So, no, 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 not just the Senate. To be queen. To be queen of Naboo. So, you got elected queen, but shouldn't everyone know your name's Padme? You know what I mean? How you get elected without saying your first name is Padme? Because you're not going to say, my name's Queen Amidala, I'm running for queen. (laughs) You call her Padme. You call the servant Padme, which everyone should know is the queen's name. Because how did you get elected? As Miss Amidala? As Queen Amidala? You know what I'm saying? She legally changed her name to Queen Amidala. But it doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. It like, definitely doesn't it, make sense. Like, how? Like, this is, of course, ignoring the fact that she's, like, 16. And won an election for Queen <laughs> of a planet. <laughs> like, where's her family? Like, is she some from some religious let, let me make sure, line let or me, some prestigious line? Let me make sure of her age, just in case we're getting it wrong and people don't I want to know shit. what her name was when she ran for... Queen is queen. I think it's just, as queen. I think she just ran as Padme, and they just didn't think it through. They obviously didn't think it through, but you don't be like, "Oh my, this is my handmade Padme." Oh, you have the same name as the queen. You look like the queen. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> mm, like I don't get Maybe it. Maybe it's one of those defenses where it's so stupid that it works because you're like, 
Well, her name her name is the same as the queen, and she looks like the queen. But they wouldn't be that dumb to just keep her with the same name when she's in disguise. Maybe it's that hiding in plain sight. I guess because like they're not very good at know knowing who the queen is. It helps that her little squad of girls, her handmaidens, or whatever the fuck they're called in Star Wars, all look very similar. Oh, my, my mistake. Padme is 14 in The Phantom Menace. <laughs> Anakin how, how is... How old is Anakin? Wait, that, that doesn't sound right. That's... How old is Anakin? Nine. But that doesn't... That's, I feel like their age gap was longer than that. It, I don't. I just think they did that because... I didn't think she was that... <laughs> she seems Natalie Portman than... was 16 yeah we'll just go with she's 16 That's no it, it everyone's saying 14 from what I'm saying but that yeah which I mean you're still getting to I mean it whether 14 16 15 13 whatever it's still the point that they elected a fucking child as their as their queen because they say elected they don't say that she inherited it yeah and but, then and then in the next movie we have a new queen who's clearly not related to Padme so it's it's an election. Yeah, it's really interesting that we know nothing of Padme's family, too. We see her parents in episode two, and that's about it. But, like, obviously they're not as important, but does she, or their family have a big, like, a big lineage in Naboo of... I'm sure there's some non-canon legends storyline about it. But in canon, there is, <laughs> there's nothing explaining it. Because I don't understand, like, that just really fucks me when I watched it. I never noticed it before, and I'm like... Wait, this Wait. doesn't make sense. She got elected while being what a child. Did she run as like, what was her name? Like, what was her name on the ballot? Amidala. I think it was just Amidala. Is it like the family ran? Oh, and the family gets to pick who wants to be the queen. <laughs> the family I'll, ran. Let's, let's pick the let's pick the let's pick the daughter. Let's pick our we'll teenage pick daughter. I'm sure she'll run a fine office. Either way, the this po- is where you can tell. Lucas was really stretching it to get that Padme Anakin romance going on, right? Either, Without too much of an age gap. Either way, like the governments in this planet are fucked. What? Obviously, they can't. People be using fake names or something because, <laughs> or they're just the people dumb. Well, obviously they're dumb. If they voted a fourteen-year-old rule the fucking country. <laughs> Planet! <laughs> you know what I mean. Beyond country. Oh, an entire planet! Could this... you imagine that? A 14-year-old. Imagine if a 14-year-old was in charge of Earth. Like, the whole planet! Oh my god. Lucas I don't just... think I'd get so worked up over this. I, I don't... just don't get it. They could have just not made her queen. They also could have just made a good movie. And we would have had a <laughs> but I mean, Think things out. But I mean, th- why did they just make her one of the queen's handmaidens? Who then runs for senator when, when Palpatine becomes chancellor? Who, Padme? Yeah. She didn't need to be queen. Who was the queen before Padme? I or have. Was, or are they allowed to have... Does it have to be a queen? Does Naboo have read a king? I have no idea. Because we know there's a queen afterwards. Yeah, we know it's a queen after her. I don't know... I, I don't know if there is a canon explanation for how the, the Naboo politics... Are. You, you think for a movie so much about politics, we would understand what the hell is going on on Naboo. Well, Claudia Gray, write a book about this, please. Help me understand the... Um, the politics? The politics of Naboo. Actually... Have you read the Padme book? Actually, that probably helped. Maybe it does. Oh, maybe it explains it. Maybe maybe we're just a couple. Yeah. Maybe we're just a couple knuckleheads. Yeah, but to me, it's confusing. It's just watching. E.K. Johnson wrote that, so she wrote the Ahsoka novel. So I'm interested to read that now, just purely based on this confusing political world. Yeah, but but at the same time, that's also a fault of the movie to make it so unclear. Yeah, like Like, it makes no sense. I, like, that's my biggest thing. Why couldn't she just... What would you lose if she was just a handmaiden who then runs to be senator when Palpatine becomes chancellor? Because she's a senator in episode two. But then how does she get involved at all? She's one of the handmaidens that, like... it like, to, It's more of like... To a the, different queen? To the decoy queen. I don't give no, a shit I like, who it is. I, I really like the decoy thing. The, I think it works. The, but the confusing thing is calling her Padme. Well, the confusing thing is also her being 14 and in charge of a planet. <laughs> It's just super confusing how that all happens. I don't. I honestly don't get it. Lucas didn't care, right? So maybe we shouldn't either. I'm gonna start to on some more research on how the government works on Naboo <laughs> because maybe there's an answer to this, but to me, it just don't make sense. But, but again, that is a fault of the movie. Phantom Menace doesn't make sense ever. 
I mean, some scenes make sense. Yeah. But we've let's been on that rant for a little bit. Let's continue on. And at this point, are they on their way to... The they're they're on their way to Coruscant, but they did take one hit during the blockade run. Um, and it crippled their ship. Crippled their ship. R2-D2 saved yeah. the ship from getting blown up. <laughs> and Jar Jar walks out and sees the astromechs and says, Hey, oh boyos! <laughs> one of them, great line. One of his many great lines. And one, then, one good thing about this movie is it is extremely quotable. It is way more quotable than I would have thought. There's a reason why prequel memes exist. Right. This movie alone. You could have a whole <laughs> subreddit just based on that. And we get to Tatooine, where we find... They have to land on Tatooine because their hyperdrive is leaking and they need a replacement. And basically, the the guards were like, we can't land there, it's ruled by gangsters. And Qui-Gon basically just says, well, if they catch us, they'll want to kill them, they'll want to take the Queen captive. If the Trade Federation finds us, they'll want to take the Queen captive. But the Huts aren't looking for us. Yes, we can trust the Huts. <laughs> More of them, we can trust them to not, not be sending shit. out scouts right. everywhere. And who do we run onto in this gorgeous planet of Tatooine, the sand planet of misery? What? Only money! The one, the only. Toy Dairy. Another Jewish racist stereotype, <laughs> Wano. An- another, a third one. Yeah. Jar Jar, New Gunray, and these guys. The Toy Dairy. Well, to be fair. Like, these guys, Wano. Wow. Yeah. To be fair, it is kind of interesting because at least in the Clone Wars, the rest of the Toy Darians don't seem to be the same as Watto. Yeah. As stereotypical. Yeah, I don't think it's a race thing with them. Well, it's obviously racist. With Watto, it but is. Would you, yeah, not as the race as a whole. Like, yeah, yeah. All the Toy Darians aren't that way, which is good. Yeah. Because <laughs> we already we already have two Watto whole races. Just the, the the Jewish guy, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's not a polite thing to say, but he is that nasty stereotype. Nasty. Why does Nawato have hair on his chin? That's disgusting. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Like he's well, a, he's he, supposed to be gross. Like he's an alien. I they don't grow facial hair. He's, ever. He's supposed to be gross. That's the point. Yeah. Why don't aliens have facial hair more often? Because you just said it's gross. Yeah, but like I commit why does it like an alien just have like a freaking neck beard and a full beard, like like a goatee. Not just dee, 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 what da, isn't, da, da, why doesn't one have a neck? Why doesn't one have a neck beard and anime body pillow? We could talk about this all day. <laughs> we introduce Watto. They're there. They They're at the shops. Qui Gon is like, "All right, let's go talk about this." Padme and Jar Jar and R two D two. You just all wait here. You all came with me they, for some fucking they, reason. Is this where they find C three PO? No, 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 no. But we get. But to- like, I, w- I want to address something else real quick. Okay. Why does Qui Gon bring? The rest of those people with him? Like, I kind of get R2, because R2 had the schematics for the ship. Mm-hmm. Why did Jar Jar... Like, I get, you know, the queen was like, oh, Padme's gotta go along. Whatever. But why does Jar Jar come with? Squad up, never roll alone. Why, why couldn't he just wait on the ship? They needed some comedics for the kiddies. Oh, cause Things was... to make him laugh. Him, like, hitting the droids and being dumb. And him stepping in literal shit. Oh, shit. But, Dan, this is where we get... <laughs> The best line in all of this cinema. This is where we get one of the, we two really great lines. What easily my favorite line in the movie almost mirrors my second favorite cringe line of all time of children trying to be romantic. romantic. This is where we meet Anakin, and honestly, this line is kind of baller as fuck for a kid to say to a girl that's way older than him. He 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 sees Padme sitting there. He comes in and he's like, "Are you ready for this? Are you an angel?" <laughs> Hell yeah! I heard... Th- and then Padme, of course, responds with the natural reaction of, what? What? I heard from, like... What do you I say? heard from spice miners, spice smugglers, or whatever. They, yeah. They're they the most beautiful creatures that come from the moons of Iago. Yeah, I know. Who, for those who don't know, in the Clone Wars animated series, we go to Iago and see an angel there. So Anakin wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. Angels do go there, boy. But goddamn, that's a baller yeah, fucking... That's a great line. He's like, dude, like... It affects me. Like, a dude... dude. Slay man, get that. Get that. Get, get, this is like this is like a kid. He's nine. What grade is that? What grade is nine year old? I don't know, like third. So it's like a third grader hitting on like the, the, you can't win kid forever trying to shoot up, you know? Oh no. That that's a, you always gotta try to hit up, you know. But the fact that it works you is can't more punch down. You gotta hit up, you know. The, it does it work? Well kinda. She eventually becomes enthralled with him. Right. This is I don't Dan, much against her will. Which line is better? <laughs> this line, are you an angel to Padme, or the one of the other greatest cringe lines of 
of a dream sequence from Avatar The Last of Airbender when Aang says to Katara, Baby, you're my forever girl. From the hit series Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> I love those two lines so much. Baby, you're my forever girl, I think is the better line. But the delivery of this one is just... Are you an angel? Are you an angel? It's like how he says yippee, but he's like, are you an angel? Like, the delivery of this one is so perfect. I don't have a, like, I want to preface this right away. We're going to make fun of his acting a lot. Nothing against the kid. He's just a bad actor. It's that, that, not his fault. He's a kid. Yeah, he's a kid. 99% of children are horrible actors. Honestly, the only good acting I've ever seen kids do is in Stranger Things. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Find a kid actor that's good in anything. So, so Jacob Tremblay. So it's, he's the main guy from Good Boys. He's really good. He was pretty good. But, like, it, it's not Jake Lloyd's fault. Yes. But he, he was an awful actor. He's an It's awful not his actor. fault again. Like... I feel bad for the guy. I, oh, I feel so bad for him. You ruined his life because... Of <laughs> we'll Jordan. get to that later. Yeah. He has some more lines. You guys think the dumb... Oh, oh you're not Jake even close. Quote. Like, yippee. Oh, God. Yippee! Yippee! But, yeah, so which one's... Which I one's said, more cringy? More cri- well, you have to account for delivery in that, and the more cringy delivery is Anakin's. Because Aang has some real suave when he says, baby, you're my forever baby, girl. You're my forever <laughs> He grabs her around the waist and like pulls her down and is like, baby, you're my forever girl. I want to try these lines on people. Yeah? Do you think they'd work? Not baby, you're my forever girl. <laughs> Why not? That's just the fact. Say that at your wedding. Baby. You're my forever girl. You're going through your vows, and you, you look at your wife, and you're like, "Are you an angel?" No, do you think it brought up a parent? Like, hey, are you an angel? Like a normal person? No, I don't think it would. <laughs> no, women, comment down below. Our one female fan. <laughs> it's okay. Our one female fans are number one fan. So. Let's see. Uh, would these work? Would these work? Would these work? If someone comes up to you and says, are you an angel? <laughs> Obviously, baby, you're my forever girl. Does not work as a pickup line. <laughs> yes. That's just something you say to people to see how they react. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. People who haven't seen Avatar are going to be like, what? What? Right. I just think that line's fucking hilarious. Oh, it's amazing. As are many of Jake anytime, Lloyd's. Anytime children say lines that are just like, Cringy. Trying to be all lovey-dovey. I'm like, oh, you're so adorable. That was bad. <laughs> but are you an angel? Very well be the best line in the prequels. That's a bold statement. There's also a line that follows this too. They're having a conversation. You know, it's kind of a little disgusting. It's not too bad here. But like, for Jake Lloyd being a child and a slave, and for Padme <laughs> being like 16, you're kind of like flirting with a kid. And it's kind of weird sometimes throughout this movie. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's okay. Anakin reverses it on her in the next one, when he's basically saying this is happening whether you want it or not. <laughs> we'll get to that discussion yeah, in that, episode that, two. I'm sure we're gonna have a long discussion about that. But yeah, like, and then he they're talking, you know, just having a conversation, <laughs> and then Padme is he like, brings up that he's a slave. He brings up like no, yeah, no. She impl- she he doesn't say it. He, oh, he implies like, it. he doesn't use the word. Yeah, he, because he like he, I think he says. I, Watto owns us or something, maybe? He said, like, Watto, uh, Gardula the Hutt lost us to Watto yeah, he, in a gambling race. Yeah, he doesn't say we're slaves, mainly because his reaction to it. When, when Padme says, are you a slave, what does Anakin say? <laughs> I'm a person, and my name is Anakin. <laughs> and he has the he, classic kid, like, pouty face when you tell him he can't go to McDonald's. I'm a person. My name, which is a great thing to say, but just the delivery was fucking hilarious. Because he's saying it like a kid that's pouting, right? Like he just got a shot, and his mom won't let him get candy. To be fair, though, it's not a bad thing to be mad about being cold. Oh no, it's not a bad thing to be mad about. It's just delivered hilariously. So funny. I'm a person, and my name is Anakin. Yeah. How are these impressions? Spot on. Are you an angel? Spot on, comment down below. Yes, tell us what impressions we're good at. Only money. <laughs> yes, brother. The Why is Bane here? here? Why is Bane here? What is happening? God damn it. But also, in the scene, you know what we see? Which is kind of nice. Not a callback, because this movie came out first. But something we see way in the future, we see a statue. Yes, we do. do you, you, oh, this is going a bit forward, actually. No, this is the same area. 
No, 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 it's going a bit forward. Well, because this is, like, after they leave. Oh, okay. We can the sandstorm comes up. That's my next note I have. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm, not, saying anything, I'm not saying anything important happens. I'm just saying it caught me off guard for a minute there. Okay, what happens next, then, after they... After they, that, you know, after that scene... Watto doesn't... Well, first of all, you have Qui-Gon fail a mind trick, because Targaryen... Oh, yes, mind trick. Because Watto has to give the classic line of... Mind tricks don't work on toy Darians. Only money. Only money. Bringing back into the uh, the Jewish stereotypes there. Yeah. That the only thing they care about is money. George Lucas's words, not mine. Very much George Lucas's words. <laughs> <laughs> so then Qui Gon, of course, basically rage quits and leaves and brings them with him. And then they're walking back to the ship, and a sandstorm comes in. Well, Obi Wan also gets a transmission from Naboo. From the from my favorite conspiracy theorist of all time. He's a guy who earlier in the movie, they had a little meeting. Like when Padme was still there. So this was a while ago. We just didn't bring it up because it wasn't important. Yeah. Um, and the guy, and like, they're talking to Palpatine. And the communications like starts fluttering and goes out. And the guy turns to Padme and immediately says, A communications disruption means only one thing. Invasion. <laughs> like, god damn, dude. <laughs> what if it's just a fucking glitch? What if the internet went out? <laughs> it's like so on guard. But anyway, check your Wi-Fi, man. Obi Wan gets a gets a communication from that guy back on Tatooine, and the guy's like, "Everyone's dying. You have to sign the treaty. Contact me." And so Obi Wan calls. Obi Wan immediately is like, "Don't send a message. They'll track it. They'll know where we are." We, let's set up our boy Qui Gon. I gotta go talk to Qui Gon, and Qui Gon is like, "Well." Don't send out any transmissions. <laughs> I'm going to try to get us out of here real quick. But then it turns out the sandstorm's coming too soon. They won't make it back to the ship in time. So they go and stay with... Little Annie. 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 And his mom. This is where we're introduced to Shmi Skywalker. Shmi Skywalker. Shmi motherfucking Skywalker. She's a character. She exists. She does, in fact, There's exist. There's not really anything to say about her. She just She's just there. She's Anakin's mom. She's a slave. She's a slave to Watto. She has, like, a combined, like, maybe ten minutes of screen time in the whole series. Right? No, she's in there. We have, like, we have, like, two minutes left of her screen time. Right. Just pretty much any time we're dealing with Anakin, like, him having to do something, like, happening. No, she, we see her fairly often in the pod race. We see her, uh, well, let me rephrase that. We have exactly, like, ten minutes where she actually is actively saying or doing something. Not even that. She's mostly just in the background. Yeah. But then, then, we are introduced to C-3PO. Yes. Because Anakin, Anakin grabs like, Padme's hand and is like, I gotta show you, I gotta show you! That's, that's how you do it, little Annie. You grab that angel's hand. Grab that angel's hand! Which then brings us to the introduction to C-3PO. And that Anakin built 3PO. It's kind of a weird thing if you think about it. Which means every time in the original trilogy when 3PO says thank the maker, he's actually thanking Darth Vader. That's hot. Think about that, fucking traitor. Just because Darth Vader... You think, you think someone gave you life and created you? I don't give a fuck if he's a bad dude. Thank you. <laughs> he gave you life. <laughs> oh, man. That's really <laughs> metaphysical. <laughs> and then they're having a discussion. Mommy, mom. He doesn't actually say that. Ask, ask, Pat, ask Shmi if they can stay. And she's, of course, cool with it. Shmi's like, I see you trying to punch up. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you go get him, he's champ. Like, he's like, yo, get him, champ. Because clearly Shmi... Look at that angel. Because... Clearly, Shmi's a virgin, apparently, so... <laughs> she doesn't know how that works, anyway. Yeah. Important thing to keep in mind. Is this, is this when they, we get the reveal, too, that he realizes that they're Jedi and they have that yes. discussion? So, yes, that whole discussion, because he saw Qui-Gon's lightsaber, or as Anakin calls it, laser sword. Laser sword. I love a good laser sword. And he delivers one of my favorite lines. Who? Qui-Gon? Anakin. Well, Anakin. Oh, I don't remember this one. No one can kill a Jedi... <laughs> and then he goes on to murder thousands of them. Right. I just, that's such a great irony. Yeah. And then, of course, Qui-Gon's like, I wish that was the case. Yeah, yeah, I wish that was the case. And, of course, you know, Qui-Gon's trying to be like, no, I'm not a Jedi. Maybe I killed him. You know, what not. What have you. Mm-hmm. And Anakin calls him out for it, basically. He's like, no, you're 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 a goddamn Jedi. And Qui-Gon's just like, okay. Okay. Well, there's no fool in you, young Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> or he like, says something like that. He's There's like, no fooling you in. Anakin. And Qui-Gon has another kind of savage moment where, where Anakin's like, are you here to free us? And he just goes, no. I wish it was the case, but... 
<laughs> God damn, let him down gently, dude. Fuck. Oh, hit him with honesty. <laughs> like, that's why I love Qui-Gon. He's so blunt, but mm-hmm. God damn. And then this is where we find out Anakin's a pilot. He's a racer. He's been building a... A pod racer. A pod machine. The fastest in the universe. And he, he, he enables... He convinces Padme... No, he convinces Qui-Gon to... Take a look. Take a look and sponsor him in this race that's going on. Because they have no other options. But they need to make the money and win the parts to be able to afford the parts to get the ship. Because apparently where Qui-Gon draws the line isn't mind-fucking. Where he draws the line is actually stealing. (laughs) Yes. I don't know what the difference would be there, but... (laughs) Like, Qui-Gon could just, in the middle of the night, jump over, like, the barrier to Watto's scrapyard, force lift up the hyperdrive, and then walk out. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, that's no different than mind fucking him. Yeah. You're still stealing either way. Yeah, that's interesting. Why don't he just take it? Leave the money in. I think at this point it's because Qui Gon can sense something in Anakin. That's true. And, and also, wants to test him by almost killing him. Also, you gotta make the story interesting. Something has to happen. Yeah, you have to have something interesting because at this point we're a pretty decent chunk of the way through the movie and not much has happened. Yeah. You have, and then. Shmi, the Sh- I don't remember. Sh- Shmi doesn't really want him to do it, right? No, Shmi's like, Shmi's I hate like, it when you ha- do it. Yeah, but Anakin loves it. That's what he's passionate about. And then Shmi just caves immediately. Well, they're slaves. What she's, they a, do? she's a great mom. She's a great mom. Great, woman. great mom. She just basically just lets her son do whatever the fuck he wants. To be fair, if you just got pregnant... Out of nowhere? Out of nowhere, and you never had sex with someone, like... You didn't plan for this shit. That's true. It's not like they're having court anger abortions in Star Wars. It's not a th- <laughs> abortions aren't a thing. You know what Fucking I mean? Hell. Oh god. You know what I mean? Yo, yeah. <laughs> no, I just thought of some really bad things that I can't say on air. Or on air. Has there ever been an abortion in Star Wars? Let's not go down this thread. No. I don't want to talk about these political topics. Do you think that happens in the universe though? I'm sure it has. Okay. Just curious. It's an interesting thought. No, it is. It's not something I I would want to discuss on this podcast, though. <laughs> Unless a story is directly involved with it. I want to see a story like that. That'd be cool. Not about abortion. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You roped yourself into that one, I did. boy. I just, wanna, I just like exploring the deeper world of Star Wars. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's something we never heard about, like especially when people are being born by the Force. Like, I'm sure, it, I'm sure it fucking happens on Ryloth with those dirty goddamn Twi'leks. <laughs> Might as well bring in some in-universe racism. Also, this is where we learn. Little Annie's a little selfless guy. He he's he's so he's a good kid. He's basically saying, I want Padme's push so bad, I will nearly kill myself for it. He's like, let me race for you, let me do this. And then he gets his mom No, he actually gets his mom good. I don't think she caves as much as he's like you're always telling me people aren't helping each other enough in the world, and, she, and you're like, got him. <laughs> you're like, boom! Got him! Woo! Clap, I'm out. George Lucas just left the set that day after they recorded that scene. Right. Got her with the ultimate fucking sucker punch, dude. It's it, it's really interesting because how good of a kid Annie is and just his arc. It's just interesting. I like that. That yeah, helps no, his arc a lot. Yeah, but he's a really good kid trying to help it out. Even or, or he just loves Padme that much, but like even in, even in the Clone Wars, he's a good guy most of the time. He just gets corrupted. Mm-hmm. And also, you can't blame Annie for, you find your angel, you gotta do everything you can to get that angel, you know? <laughs> it's just really funny. I mean, I get it. He's a little slave kid who has had nothing in his life that's good. Yeah, and he still wants to help people. And he, Yeah, and he still wants to help people. It's a combination of things. And then qui just being like, okay. Honestly, be, we're watching these. I'm not like Anakin more when it's all said and done. Bad acting in this movie. Sorry, Jake Lloyd. You deserve better, but like... It's not your fault. Interesting arc. Interesting arc. So what happens next, Sam? What happens? Is it pod race time? Um, well, they test out the pod racer, more Jar Jar shenanigans, nothing really important. Is this, is this where we get one of the Kitster's famous lines, or is this at the pod race? Oh, it's when he first shows them the pod racer, actually. He yeah. first shows them the pod racer, and Anakin's little friend, Kitster, comes up and says, That's so wizard, Annie! No, they're brilliant. Dialogue writing. George Lucas. One thing, Lucas. Where's your is, Oscar? Where's your Oscar? Writing? One thing, you know, Lucas, we, we've been ranting about Lucas a lot this episode. <laughs> one thing you can't fault the man for, he knows how to make them quotes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little Annie. He knows how to write for a small child more than anything. <laughs> Just 
Because honestly, these aren't lines a small child wouldn't say. But also, <laughs> but also, you're making a film. Like, make it good dialogue. Make kids smart. To be fair, though, does that make it better because it's more realistic? Because these are It abs- doesn't help this movie. <laughs> it doesn't help this movie, but I mean, in general, it could help. Yeah. But yes, then, you know, you have a little bit of more just fucking down... T- oh, no, 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 no. There is something else important before the pod race. Glad we didn't skip this. The thing I tried to bring up earlier? Midichlorians. Yes. We did skip the Maz Kanata statue, though. That's, yeah, there's a Maz Kanata statue. In Anakin's room when he shows them 3PO. Yeah. We're, we're sorry that they were just jumping all over <laughs> the place. Like, yeah, we don't want to talk about everything, but we got to just mention the big things. That was just a little small tidbit. It's not important. Yeah, I just mean <laughs> we're jumping all over the place a lot, but that's okay. Yeah. But it's so, hard to keep the whole full plot directly yeah, even sequential. It, even after just watching even it. Even after just watching it. But then we have the scene where Qui-Gon takes a sample of little Annie's blood and has Obi-Wan analyze it for midichlorians. What are midichlorians, Dan? Midichlorians are the Force. Goodbye, mysticism! Fucking hate midichlorians, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> I don't think I'm a fan of Star Wars anymore, Dan. Uh. Midichlorians ruined it all. See, me personally, midichlorians a bad idea. I don't... It doesn't, like, destroy me. Because the Force is best one with them. But the fact that they never address it again, I think, helps a lot. Oh, absolutely. I told you this when we were watching the movie, and I want to bring it up on the podcast. What? We have a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Let me segue. I thought we were just recording this for funsies. God damn it. Okay, yeah. But my, my thing that I want them to do, eventually... If they haven't already, we really haven't looked into this too much. <laughs> not that we know. Yeah, not that we know for sure. It might be in a book somewhere. Yes. But I want them to just be like, in one of the movies, or one of the books, or one of the comics, or one of the TV shows, or whatever, I want them to just be like... In like an in-between thing between one and two, mainly because we don't explore that area much. True. I want them to be like, you know, there was this theory a while back about midichlorians. Yeah, that was all wrong. Yeah. We don't know what is the force. Turns out whatever that, what, that high count you had was just like, your blood pressure at the time. <laughs> Like, it'd be really dumb, and they're because it would really, like, fuck with that movie a lot. Because that movie kind of relies on Anakin having a high midichlorian count. But also, like... Everybody hates it! Yeah. But, like, here's an interesting thing. Let's, say, let's talk about this. Like, how do you dis- make it a theory, but also have it, like, explain what was happening? Because obviously there's something in him that's reading high. I, I don't care how they explain it. I just want midichlorians to not count anymore. I don't think they do, though. It's never addressed really again. I, th- they, I think they mentioned in the Clone Wars series a few times. I think they say it a couple times in the Clone Wars, and I think they say it a couple times in two or three. Oh, Palpatine says it in three a couple times. See, the thing that does, like, midichlorians obviously are not a good thing. They take some of the mysticism away from the Force. But also... Which, that's where the Force is at its best. But also, having a gauge of of how, of knowing or not if people have the Force isn't really, like, that bad for the Force, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just, it's not like destroying the force. The force is still very mystical, and like how it works and what it can do, and no, 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 yeah, like, yeah, where yeah, it comes yeah. from is interesting. Just, but just having something that reads that you have, it shouldn't read how powerful you are. It should just be a telltale sign if you have the force. No, because here, here, here's the biggest problem with midichlorians. Was like I get it, but also I don't think it's as staggering as people make it out to be. A big thing that it's framed of before the prequels was that the force was more of a religion. And was something that if you believed in it, you could have it, essentially. Yeah. Which is true in some cases. And the prequels, more or less, in this movie specifically, are more along the lines of, if you don't have high midichlorians, sorry, buddy. Yeah. You're just not forced, you're not able to use the force. Yeah. But also, yeah. I I agree it's not as groundbreaking as people make it sound. I just like overreacting on recording. No, yeah, it's bad, though. It's bad. But it's not like... It's not gra- It's not like series ruining. Yeah. Do I just realize, having this conversation with you, this guy I work with, I talked with him about Star Wars stuff. He's like a big, like, KOTOR guy. And, like, old Star Wars, like, hates the last year, that kind of stuff. Like, legends. But, like, we had a, we had, were having a conversation the other day, and he was like, you really don't hate anything, do you? And I'm like, what? And he's like, he's like, you either love something or you just really don't care. And I just realized that, like, talking about midichlorians, like, everyone hates midichlorians. I don't really like them, but, like, also, I really don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, there are, there, I'm not a very hateful person, but I do have those couple things that I just really hate. Yeah, there's a few things, but, like, 
I just love to love things. But that's also, we have that kind of same mentality where if it's not for me, then I just don't really care about it. Yeah. Unless, like, there are very few things that are like, I fucking hate this. Or maybe you're saying I don't think anything's bad. I don't remember. But it was something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, because we're not, we're not very negative people. Thought. Yeah. As we know, the Star Wars fan base is pretty negative. Yeah. <laughs> we like to celebrate Star Wars. We like to celebrate everything. That was just a weird thought that came to mind where I just like I, I saw that come out in me for a minute. <laughs> it's something I like I really don't like, but also just don't give a fuck enough about. So. Yeah. Like, like I mean, cosmetic horns, yeah, they suck, but it's really whatever. Yeah. It's a good thing they never mentioned me. If they kept, if they kept bringing it up, it'd be awful. Like if they were like in the sequels, they're like, "Look at Ray's midichlorian count. Don't ruin Ray." If Ray <laughs> and midichlorians ever come together, what if that's how Episode Nine opens? I'm leaving the theater. <laughs> no, you fucking aren't. I'm not leaving the theater. We we could be having a fucking tornado, and you would not leave that theater, right? Neither would I. And maybe if Ray wasn't in the movie and there was a tornado, like I'd, I'd bounce like a tornado. I can watch. Oh, like if she wasn't in the movie at all. Yeah, I can. But like if Ray's in the movie, I'm the guy who literally every time I go to Walmart or Target and see a Ray poster, I almost think about buying it. This is true. This happened last week. Last I, week. I almost went back and bought it three times. Oh my fuck! I want to buy Star Wars pinball on the Nintendo Switch just so I can have. A game cover with Ray on it. People are going to think you're a fucking psychopath. Yes. I, part of it is to, like, to play up the joke. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Obviously, you got to commit to the bit. Play you got to commit to that play bit. It. Okay, but enough about Ray. Coming from man in a Ray shirt. <laughs> As you are wearing your Ray shirt right now. Yeah, my many Ray shirts. Okay, back to Phantom Menace. We got on a humdinger how of does, a sidetrack. How do you think Ray connects to the Phantom Menace long run? Um, Copy your father. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, got him. we got him. Okay, where are we? Where are we at? Back, back to Phantom. <laughs> well, uh, um. Okay. Oh boy, we definitely they don't have to, have to be worried about making that time anymore. <laughs> okay, they have to get to um, Qui Gon. They have to go talk to Watto about letting him use Anakin and making a bet or making a deal because they need to sponsor the pod race. Yes, and they have no to pay. money. Obviously, they had money. They'd be able to pay for the. The ship. The part for the ship. So that he has to convince Watto to let Anakin be their racer, and then he makes a bet. And if, if Anakin wins the pod race, he gets... Watto... Watto gets the ship. Watto, no, no. Watto gets to keep the money. Gets to keep the money, but they get Anakin and the parts. Well, hold on, hold on. Here's how it starts. Anakin doesn't come into the equation until later. Oh, what? They, I it was right away. No, no, no. It's, well, Anakin is the one who's driving the pod, and Qui-Gon's initial bet... Is that if Anakin wins, Watto gets all the prize money minus the money needed for the part that they need for their ship. <laughs> if Anakin loses, then Watto gets their ship. So Watto wins either way. How does Anakin get pulled into this? Like? Not until they're almost at the race when Watto pulls out the chance cube. Yes. Because Qui Gon brings up later, he's like, well, say, how about no matter what, I give you the pod if it survives? Mm hmm. Because I don't need the pod anymore. And in exchange, I'll get Anakin and his mom. And then Watto's like, oh, no pod's worth two slaves. And then Qui-Gon's like, okay, then the boy. And then they roll the dice, and Qui-Gon moves it to make sure it lands on Anakin. Yeah, he uses the force to make sure it lands on Blue. Another, uh... Another great moment of Qui-Gon just not yeah. giving a fuck. Just Being doing, gray. Just doing... Just doing what he has to do for the good of the galaxy, from his opinion. But is freeing one slave worth being a terrible person? Yes. I believe so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's not even a question. I'm a terrible person and I freed no slaves. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So? Pod racing time. Dan. Pod, pod one of the, racing time. One of the few decent things in this film. One of the cool, th one of the, like, probably, like, the three cool things in this movie. This, the end, and Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan. They're really Yeah. Special. You know? So, we get introduced to a fucking... Whole slew of racers. Yeah, slew of these mission chuckle fucks. Chuckle fucks, man. We got we got Dud. No, what's his name? Dud Bolt. Doug Bolt. Dud. Dud Bolt. D U D. Not like Doug from like Doug the Funny. Hit show Doug. No, no, no. Not like Doug. Okay. Dud Bolt. Ben Quadraneros. Oh my boy, Ben Quadraneros. Oh, we got the man who we didn't meet earlier, but we didn't mention the rival, the guy who always wins. 
Sebulba. Sebulba Fett. Sebulba's interesting, but he's fucking... Did you say Sebulba Fett? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sebulba, because he walks on his hands. He's a dub. And he, like, drives with his legs. It's pretty cool. It's also, like, kind of weird, but I love him. He's a dub. That's how dugs move. Yes. We we found his ship. The only reason... Our badass D&D game we played. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that! It was really bad. Okay, enough about that. But, um... Yeah, we yeah we didn't introduce him earlier because he always wins. Why even need to introduce? Like, yeah. Everybody knows Sebulba. Yeah, Sebulba, the dude who walks on his hands, who sexiest Star Wars bachelor of all time. Right? Sorry, Finn. <laughs> 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 That's a callback to Star Wars Celebration. I don't remember. Finn that. says that on the panel. Oh, he does. John Boyega says that. Yes. Something along those That's lines. That's true. That's true. I, I remember that now. I always remember that. But yeah, we're introduced to Sebulba. And a whole fuckload of racers. They're all getting ready to go. Any other notable racers? I don't remember. <laughs> Name all of them, man. You know you know all of them. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot here. I used to play Pod Racers Revenge on the PS2, but I always played as Dud Bolt or Anakin. <laughs> or I didn't have. I never. I don't think I ever unlocked Sebulba. Ben Quadrinaris is the one that dies at the beginning, right? Ben Quadrinaris is the one who is Pod Racer just explodes at the beginning. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, Anakin basically falls in almost an entire lap behind at the beginning because his Pod Racer doesn't start. Yeah, I don't know how he won. It's kind of bullshit. I mean, he was right. He built the fastest fucking racer in the world. Mm-hmm. Just fast enough to catch up and then just stay there. Spoiler, Anakin wins. <laughs> what? What? I thought he was going to die. The, honestly, one of the things I love about pot racing is how it's like super cutthroat. It's like they're like trying to kill each other to win this race. So Bulba kills everyone. Like, literally, pretty much everyone dies except Sebulba and Anakin. Sebulba and Anakin and then Ben Quadronaus does survive. I thought his ship blew up. No, we see his ship, like, land on the ground. Mm. And he, like, punches his screen. I just love how it's, like, it's very scoundrelly. It's, like, let's, we gotta win this race. A lot of money on it. Do anything you gotta do to win. And it's, like, it's just cool. That's why it's, that's why it's an Outer Rim thing. Because it's illegal. Yeah, I love it, though. It's so rough and so, yeah, I love that, too, how it's just. Very cutthroat. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it fits with the hut, like regime very well. Yeah. It's just, who gives a shit if they live or die? I'm here to bet. Right. <laughs> One of the interesting parts of pot, the pot racing se- sequence was <laughs> there was, like, no music playing at all, and it was kind of weird after a while. There, There's, like, this one, like, minute stretch. It's longer than a minute. No, 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 but I'm talking about one part in specific where it's really obvious. Yeah. It's, like, when Anakin's, like, starting to catch up on Sebulba, and it's just, like, silent. For, like, a minute. Because, like, obviously they want the engines revving and that to be, like, make it intense and stuff. Which, I guess it is at times. Maybe if you're in a theater, it's better. With like oh, the, I'm with sure. The when you have the surround sound, just... <laughs> which is, like, a really weird choice. Especially... Towards, when, but, but towards the end, there's a little music. Once Anakin's ship starts breaking... Yeah. Because Sebulba sabotaged it. <laughs> broke off a piece of it before the race started. It... There, but before that, yeah, there's there's really no music. Yeah, it's weird. Which is a really bizarre choice, especially for a franchise with such iconic music. Right. <clears throat> I get what he was going for. Though. No, no, I, I get it. I just think it was a poor choice. Definitely a poor choice. <laughs> well, you know, like we said, maybe in the theater it was a good choice yeah. to hear the nothing but the engines revving in your ears. But for a home release... Or for anybody who's watching it a second, third, fourth, and so on time. 13th, 70th for you. It's a really <laughs> it's a really rough decision. So do you know what we have to do now to get to the bottom of this? To see if it's really the true experience? We're going to have to go to the 27-hour Star Wars marathon before 9 to see what episode one likes in the theater. Oh. Is that a thing? Yeah. They did that for, for last Jedi where they played them all in a row. <laughs> 27 hours. Yeah, so we just go to the Phantom Menace leave <laughs> and then come back like when the force awakens starts to play <laughs> sit in the theater for 10 hours what that'd be metal as hell though oh i i feel like i would do the 27 hour one i you'd have to like plan where you when you sleep and stuff oh yeah i, I wonder if you can leave and come back in i would just i would just miss the first two movies and then come in at three personally Skip the two bad ones. I think it'd be an interesting experience, but I also think it could ruin the experience of watching The Rise of Skywalker for the first time. 
Because it's so long? Because you've been in the theater for fucking 20 hours. Oh, is it right before Rise of yes, Skywalker? Yes, you oh, need to lead it, into it. It goes straight? That's actually fucking dope. Yeah, but also, I think it would be weird. I think it would ruin the experience a little bit. you'd be tired as hell. Oh, come on. Are you saying... Or they let you leave and go home and sleep and come back? No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying that if you were up for 27 hours and Rise of Skywalker started playing for the first time in front of you, you wouldn't wake the hell up? I would, but also, it'd I'd be, be hard. I'd be fucking amped, dude. I think it'd be fun, but also... I'm, you need to, like, have a whole week planned around that. You need to, like... Mm. You need, like, three days of recovery. Also, like, can you leave the theater and come back in as long as you have your ticket? I assume you could at least leave to, like, go to the fucking bathroom. No, I mean, like, can you leave the theater, go home and sleep? Like, I mean, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of it. But I'll, Yeah, but, like, what are you gonna do, sleep <laughs> in the theater? <laughs> we'll talk about this later. No. Si- sidebar. No. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just saying before we get too far off track. Yeah, it's interesting. So I guess we'll have to test that in the theater one day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> before episode 10. Right. 30 hour. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Including all... No, what they need to really do, the real Alpha Chad move, would be if it was not just the movies, but counting all of Rebels, Clone Wars, and Resistance in there as well. That would be like... <laughs> there for like four days. It'd be funny though, like with Resistance, like you're playing the movie, you see Hux's speech, and it just cuts to the episode of Resistance where you see Hux's speech. Oh, like it cuts <laughs> in the and, middle? And, like It cuts in between movies just to make it... Purely canon, like canonical. Oh, like complete, absolute canon timeline. Yes, that'd be funny. <laughs> <sighs> Mandalorian. In between, you have to watch a Let's Play of Fallen Order. Oh, there you. Go. Oh, hell yeah, we can supply that, baby. <laughs> so where were we? Pod racing school. Oh, pod racing. Pod racing school. We we get our first like we see Or sing for the first time, just watching the race. We see a mishmash of characters. Nothing interesting. Pod race, obviously. You see Weasel. Weasel. Well, next to Watto. We'll talk about him later. I wonder where. I wonder <laughs> what movie. People, there's so many people who would be watching this and just be like, who the fuck is Weasel? I guess we gotta find You're talking about Sam time. Wessel? Sam. We're not talking about Sam Wessel. <laughs> but yeah, Anakin wins. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. So Bulba's pod racer blows up. Yeah. And he survives. Best part about Anakin winning, Watto. Watto literally loses everything. He bet he, he was his whole life on that race against Anakin, his own slave boy, who he's been around. Like you know, you got at least know, you maybe your slave, you may not like him, but you got to know there's something there. Be a good owner. Well, to be fair, also Watto had placed Anakin in those before, and they said Anakin never finished. Oh, yes, that's the thing. Kitster said no. Kitster did. Kitster say says that, that Padme's like you never finished a race. And Anakin just says, well, I'm going to this time. <laughs> Which is hilarious. They can, He convinced them, but he's never finished a race before. <laughs> so, so to be fair, Watto is a little in the right to bet against Danny. Yeah, I guess. That's true. But also, your whole life against Danny. To be fair, anybody who bets their whole life on a race, I have no sympathy for. <laughs> that is true. I don't have sympathy for it. I just think it's like, come on, you're smarter than this. <laughs> But that's also why in Attack of the Clones, he's homeless. Which is amazing. Which is hilarious. Okay, what's what's after the pod race, Dan? I don't remember exactly where we They go to Coruscant, and we spend a while there is with this, them just talking. Is this where we see the Jedi Council for the first time? Yes. Who's on this Jedi Council, Dan? We have some interesting figures here. You got Ki-Adi Mundi. Ki-Adi Mundi, also known as the guy with the big, big forehead. forehead. <laughs> Yadel, also known as female Yoda. Which is like, is she Yoda's race? Yes. Yeah. She's the only other member of Yoda's race that we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. There's Plo Koon. Yeet, yeet. There's Kanan's master. Whose name we don't remember. I don't it, remember. It ha- it's like Dalaba or something. Dalaba the Hutt? Dal- Daluba the Hutt. I don't remember. Yeah, Kanan's master right next to the guy. The boy. F. Koth. E- oh! One episode of Clone Wars, man. You gotta watch it. It's not very good. I honestly don't remember. I just love him. <laughs> And then a couple other chuckle course, fucks. The, and, and then Mace Windu and Yoda. Yeah. Puppet Yoda. But then eventually CG Yoda. In the version we watched, he was CG. Because originally in the film, he was a puppet, and it was ugly. So it was a weird puppet. Yeah, so they were like, we gotta fix this. Like, how do you have a perfect Yoda puppet, and then just like... And the original trilogy, just be like, 30 years later, you can't make a decent puppet for Yoda. Yeah, he kind of was a little scary in the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> At least they got it right in Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, I'm like, we have the boys there. Boys. <laughs> no, no, no. So, but we have this whole scene where it's like they're, they're talking, talking about Anakin, pretty much, right? They're talking about also how Darth Maul attacked them. Oh yeah, we when haven't, they were on their way. We haven't really off. talked about Maul much. Because I mean, this is really the first time he's shown up for the most yeah. part. He has a couple lines, and he shows up in the background being all spooky. Oh, he attacked them while they were leaving. Yeah. Because Anakin's free. Anakin's free. They're heading back to their ship to go to Coruscant, which is where we just were. And Qui-Gon turns around and goes, Anakin, duck! And Anakin falls to the ground. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> he should have force pushed him. I, I wish he would have just, like, grabbed him and just thrown him into the ground. There's a nice little battle here. Of course, there's, like, a little scene where Anakin sad leave his mom, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah. just... Sad that they Nothing really free. of note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Anakin, you know... Man, we're great at reviewing this movie. <laughs> we're, not, we're just talking about it. We can't talk about every fucking scene. So no, 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 I know, no, 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 no. I know, I know. The movie's two hours long. If we discuss every scene and then talk what we think about it, this would be a four-hour podcast. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. I know, I know. It's just funny because we keep jumping around. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. And there's only one thing worthy of a four-hour podcast. You know what that is. And you listening at home know what that is, too. You look so confused. I'm very confused. Okay, do we just skip over it. <laughs> I was going to say Attack of the Clones. No, the one thing we've done actually done a four-hour podcast for. Okay. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and now everybody will just be like, what? I don't see a what? four-hour podcast. What? Everyone's like an hour between hour 15 and hour 40. What <laughs> happened? And then there's this one that's going to be really we got to find our secret YouTube channel where we make secret podcasts. Oh, hell yeah. Called Secret Podcast Wars. Called Weak Thigh Guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, we're like... Sabulba, we walk on our hands, so our thighs aren't very thick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Maul attacked him. Very kind of a cool way. little fight. Yeah, first time the lightsaber fight has looked good. Yeah. <laughs> well, the first time a fight in that whole movie looked good. Yeah. First lightsaber fight of the movie. Mm-hmm. Pretty much lightsaber on lightsaber, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I don't like the whole, oh, lightsaber fight has to be a lightsaber on a lightsaber, like, Chill out. Uh, uh, yeah. That's a discussion for later. But that, that's just the terminology used. Yeah. Um, and then they, you know, so they're like, we think it was a Sith that attacked us. Yeah. And then they're like, the Sith have been dead for a thousand years. What the fuck? Right. And so, you know, they talk about that, and then Obi-Wan goes to leave, and Qui-Gon's still standing there. You know, I was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And, Qui- and Qui-Gon's like, I found the Chosen One. <laughs> just kind of... <laughs> Jumps right into it. I found a boy. I think he's the chosen one. He has more metaclorins than you, Yoda. And then they... Wait, wait, wait. What? No, no, nothing. Yeah. Not yet. No. <laughs> make sure. I see the notes. Yeah. And we they have a discussion about him. They're like... We gotta try like, You're him. talking about the privacy to bring balance to the Force? Which yeah. apparently the Jedi don't know what the word balance means. Yes, they do not know what the word balance means. Which we'll discuss. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> In <do>. length. <laughs> that the Jedi don't know what the fuck the word balance is. Correct the moon, though. So they're, you know, they're arguing about it, but then inevitably, Mace and them are like, "Look, w- now's not the time for this. Yeah, we're, we we got to with the whole trade federation bullshit. We have trade federation we bullshit. To do. <laughs> we got tax bullshit to do, and more importantly, we have a supposed Sith out there. Yeah. Let's worry about that yeah, first. Let's do that. Balance your checkbook. We got this. <laughs> Gotta go watch another four hours of C-SPAN. <laughs> Then we have we do have a scene with Padme and Emperor, right? Senator, at Senator, the time. We, you, I'm gonna call him Palpatine, Senator Chief, and then Chief. they are discussing how they need to do get the guy who is Senator gone, the guy who's Chancellor, Chancellor, gone. Chancellor Valorum, and well, basically it's like Valorum's their only supporter right now, and Palpatine's basically saying, well, Chancellor Valorum is weak. Nobody listens to him. Right. The the bureaucrats control everything. And Padme's like, well, he's our best supporter. What do you want me to do? Go against him? Mm-hmm. And Palpatine just basically says, yeah. Because <laughs> he's Palpatine. And she does. And she does. Which we get to our, the first time we see the British Parliament. The big <laughs> fucking circle things. And... Everybody just arguing. It's just really yeah. boring. She, th- she goes against... Dude. She votes to have a vote of no confidence. But, but then she also eventually, I don't know if it's in this scene or shortly afterwards, she's like, do what you want, but like, we are we realize today the government and the Senate's broken, and we're not going to be any part of this. We're going back to fucking Naboo and handling this ourselves. I hope that you, Senator Palpatine, can make the Senate better when we come back. Right. Because also, also a weird thing, Naboo brings up the vote to get Chancellor Valorum out of there, and then the senator from Naboo runs to be Chancellor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that seems kind of like a power move? I mean, it is a power move, because it's part of Palpatine's plan. Yeah, no. You just think someone would have been like, eh, 
did you just bring up this vote just to get yourself elected? Right. And then, also in this scene, we see E.T.'s. Yeah. I've never knew that until today. From Steven Spielberg's E.T. The extraterrestrial. The extraterrestrial. <laughs> Which is interesting that they're a race in Star Wars, I guess. I, I don't think they're a real race in Star Wars. Just it's cameo. just an Easter egg. Because there's, you know, the fucking British Parliament room is yeah, you know, like, we thousands. Got, we gotta fill all these things with like a different looking alien. So just put ETs in there. Yeah. We never see them again. See him in my boy. This way, he'll owe me one later when he when I want to put a laser sword in ET two. You know. I thought you were gonna say when I need someone to direct Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> Get to that later. Yeah. No. And then is this where we go? We go back to. Yeah, they, so they have the whole they have the whole debacle. Padme's like, "Look, I'm going back to Naboo. You can't stop me because I need to handle this. If the longer we wait here, the more people are going to die." Yeah. And so then, you know, Palpatine doesn't want her to go, but he can't force her to stay. Yeah. Technically, right now, I'm pretty sure she outranks him. Who Palpatine? Yeah, because he's just a senator. Yeah. What's she? The queen of Naboo. Queen. Oh yeah. What? Like in matters about Naboo, I mean. Yeah. She outranks him. Of course. So he can't... Wait, he's the senator of Naboo. I forgot about that. He's yeah. from Naboo. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's funny. They bring up the vote of no confidence for the chancellor, and then Palpatine from Naboo runs to be chancellor. You think most people would be like, Fuck this is shit. a power play. Fuck that noise. But hey, Palpatine's smart enough to make it work. Right. And then, is it right after this? I don't remember exactly, but the next notable scene <laughs> is um, <laughs> they bring Anakin in front of the council and talk to him. Yes. And they, you know, they have the little scene where Anakin's trying to tell what's on the, the iPad. On the, yeah, on the iPad, yeah. <laughs> it's basically what it is. On the little monitor. And iPad test- with a stick. They're testing him and trying to figure out if he should be a Jedi. Mace doesn't think they should train him because he's too old. Yoda doesn't think they should train him because he's too old either. Yeah. But, and, then there's just, and then Yoda's like, since he's in where Yoda has one of the most memorable Yoda quotes of all time. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. Which, which interestingly, is kind of Anakin's arc. It literally is Anakin's arc. Which is like such a good quote: Fear, Fear, Episode One; Anger, Episode Two; Hate, Episode Three; and Suffering, Darth Vader. Yeah. What Anakin's Darth Vader? Spoiler! What? Yeah. It is a very great line. I actually really it like It really that. is a good line, because it's kind of... At the time, you really don't realize, like, that's the dude's arc. Because he's scared in this movie. Yes. Like, he, Anakin very much in this movie is, like, trying to figure out... Which is a big theme of Star Wars, like, just trying to figure out his place in all this. Yeah. Like, that's one of the biggest themes of origins of Star Wars in general. Trying to find your... Even Obi-Wan kind of is trying to find, figure out his place in this. Yeah, everyone tries to find out their place in their first movie. <laughs> Anakin yeah. is no exception. Yeah. He's trying to figure out what's going on. He's scared. He's he's lost his mom. Mm-hmm. He didn't lose his mom, well, but he's... You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> he's not around his mom. Mm-hmm. And he's basically just being bombarded with questions by a bunch of space wizards that he's never met before. With laser sword. And he's a nine-year-old. Right? I'd be scared, too. He's, in, he's seen air conditioning for the first time in his life. He's fucking cold. He's like, I'm cold. I didn't know I could be cold. He's like, I didn't know I was cold. I didn't know angels were real. Like, what is going on? Why is there a puppet talking to me? Right? I'm sorry. Why is there CG talking to me? Oh, wait. I'm used to that with Jar Jar. He should be like, why the hell is this angel talking to me? You know? (laughs) So, yeah, that that is a noteworthy scene. They basically just say, no, you're not being trained. And then is this where the... And is this where the action starts to pick up after this? Finally, at long last, the movie gets decent. This last act is actually pretty all right. Yeah, this the last act of this movie is actually pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Tyler just no, looked. No, it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You don't need to tell him why I just did. No, no, it's a secret. If you want to know, figure it out. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Mystery. They go back to Naboo for the ninetieth time in this film. Yeah. They spend a lot of time on Naboo here. A lot of time. <laughs> this is the next notable thing that happens that I haven't been noticed. Yes. It's the Padme twist. That is what happens next, because they have to go and get support from the Gungans. And she reveals that she's been Queen of Madala all along. Or this Which is the first back time... To my dumb rant, yeah. This is the first time in the film it is said... And known that it is happening. Yes. Watching this first time, you're like, oh, shit. Which also, like I said earlier... What are you doing? Chair, it, chair was getting uncomfortable. Hey, I don't need to know. 
Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. She, which makes me forgive her, like, really bad monotone she has in the Queen outfit the whole time. But this is part of the disguise. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the white face. It's and the white the, face the, and the same voice. The like, flat. The, what's a Padme line? Give me a Padme line. I cannot support a, a, I don't fucking know. I don't know. If I had my phone by me, I'd give you one. But, yeah, she's just like. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care what you. Oh, I can't do it. I that. don't want to go to war. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what it is. And the very monotone, like, plain, voice. flat. They have that to hold the, you know, they have that whole reveal to Boss Nass, and everyone's like, Pat. Amadala's first name is Padme? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow even the Jedi were fooled. Right, and so action picks up here. The the oh, hold on. one other important thing: Jar Jar is made into a bombad general. Oh yeah, he's going to lead this army on the front lines, baby. Because if there's one thing Gungans are known for, it's competent decision making. Are they competent? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, they beat Grievous. They did in the Clone Wars series. To be fair, it was in the rain, and they were using electricity. Right. Against a robot. <laughs> it's a little unfair. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the action finally starts to pick up. They have their whole little plan. Basically, fuck the Gungans. We're going to let them fight the army and die. While we go and infiltrate the palace and capture New Gunray. Because New Gunray's a coward and he'll just turn off the whole the whole platoon. He'll just be like, alright, I, I don't want to die. <laughs> Which is true. Right. So basically their plan is, hey, I know we just became friends, Gungans. Let, how about you all go and die for me? And it works. I will die for little any any day, says Boss Nass. <laughs> Not really. But um, yeah, um, yeah. And then the fighting starts. The fighting begins. Padme and them are, tr- are running around the place in Naboo, trying the to palace. They go into the hangar. They're trying to get to Newt, right? They're trying. Yeah, they're going to Newt, and they happen to go through the the hangar at the time. Mm-hmm. And who comes out? The Darth Mauly boy. Darth Maul. Da-da-da. And one of the best scores in cinema in cinema history begins to play. Duel the Fates. This is like the only song people play when we lightsaber fight in the Sagan Shake parking lot when randoms come up. Like, <laughs> this is the song that, the go-to lightsaber fighting song of all time. If you would like to see videos of us lightsaber fighting in the Steak and Shake parking lot, go to swordsmanabsilion at youtube.com. Damn, people will know who you are now and what you look like. I don't care. <laughs> and yeah, Darth Maul, they, they... Qui-Gon basically says, we'll handle him, and then Padme Those, and them go to find Newt. Padme and them go to find Newt, they get off, and then Qui-Gon tells Anakin to stay in the ship. Yes. With R2. Very specifically. Very specifically, and then that ship starts to... Take off. Take off. Because Anakin is trying to destroy the droid decas that are about to blast everyone. Yeah. So Anakin's like, alright, I got a fire on them, he accidentally turns on the ship, he kills the droid decas, but then the ship's on autopilot. And then he just gets... He flies right he out get, of there. He gets sent straight to the Lucre Hulk. Yep. And then Padme going up there to find Newt. She she has this nice little scene where Newt sees her, and then like, oh, she's the fake. When and they see the when they when see they the see, fake when they see the fake, and they're like, okay, go after her. Turns out she was the real thing. They stop him, get him down, and yeah. It basically another big switcheroo where the decoy is wearing the face paint, so they make Newt believe the fake is the real one when the real one's right in front of him. Yeah. Big mind fuck again. Nate <laughs> Newt Gunray is dumb. But we have a pretty badass lightsaber fight. Oh yeah, I love this scene. The whole fight, the whole room, everything. This is like the one part of the movie that is so well done, which is actually great. Yeah. To be fair, if there was going to be one part of the movie that would be great, it's got to be this one. Right. I just yeah. Honestly, one of my favorite things in the movie happens during this fight. I don't know if we want to just you want to talk about the fight. Yeah, and let's then, talk about the fight first. Stuff's really unco- is near the end. Yeah, let's talk about the fight first. So we have, of course, Ray Park as uh, Darth Maul, Darth Maul. just in, moving all over the place. He's like going insane, and of course, this right is- as the fight starts, this is the first time we see the double blade start. Yeah, ever. I don't know if they uh, ever ever. Do they reveal that in the trailer for the movie? You think? Maybe. Uh, I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> and then you're like, holy shit. Double. double blade and the music's just fucking going going in and it's just like this was the moment where I had to put down my phone and actually watch the movie <laughs> right 
And yeah, it's just they're going nuts, man. It's it's actually very well choreographed. It's a lot of cool moves. Oh, it's very fast. The, fast, yeah. The only good fight involving a lightsaber in this movie, really. Oh yeah, for sure. It has my favorite moment in the movie too when they're fighting. And then they, they're running through the thing, they're fighting, and... Obi-Wan gets knocked behind and falls behind, and Qui-Gon and Maul keep fighting and going forward, while and, Obi-Wan tries to catch up. And while they're fighting, they get trapped in, like, these laser doors things. And they can't fight through them. So while that happens, they're staring at each other, and then Qui-Gon goes to his knees and, like, meditates, which is awesome. And then you see Darth Maul pacing back and forth, which is just, like... I just love the way it looks, because it, like, contrasts their fighting it's style the, so much, and it just says so much about them. It's the ultimate symbolism as well in the difference between the Jedi and the Sith. Mm-hmm. A Jedi is patient and waits for the right moment to strike. A Sith is ready to go at any moment. He's just fucking... He's just pacing, watching Qui-Gon, catching his breath. Because Darth Maul is not a stamina fighter at this point in the franchise. Yes. A little bit of an explanation as to what happens later when he loses is that Darth Maul is not a stamina fighter. He's an assassin. Mm-hmm. Qui-Gon actually lasts long enough against him that he gets kind of winded. Mm-hmm. Which is ultimately what makes him lose. But what? yeah, the, Qui- Someone loses? <laughs> the whole laser door thing is really cool. It's like it's like ten laser doors. Obi-Wan's stuck all the way at the beginning, while Darth Maul's like right at the end and Qui-Gon's right next to him. They open again, they get out, and then... Obi-Wan almost catches almost up. Almost catches up, but he gets trapped by the last door. And at this moment, Qui-Gon and Darth Maul. Maul are fighting. And then, yeah, what happens? What happens? Maul knocks his lightsaber up, hits Qui-Gon in the face with, like, the, the hilt the of hilt it, of the saber, yeah. and then, like, spins around and stabs him. Qui-Gon is dead. Rest in power, Qui-Gon. Re- oh. Rest in power. My boy. And, of course, you have Obi-Wan screaming, No! Yeah, and, uh, then I love his reaction to it because you can tell he's pissed but also yes he has to like he, he's like he's like ready to fucking go he, after but that. he also has to like stay true to who he is and like not yeah. try to remember his teachings yeah because I mean, this is a big moment for him this is oh absolutely big moment of obi-wan's life his master falling in front of his eyes and then he gets out they go at it there's a little, cool well, uh, there's a little bit that happens in between this part actually oh yeah that he they, they take qui-gon and throw him in the hole yeah. No, that doesn't happen. What happens in between us is that Anakin reaches the battle station. Oh, I thought we were... Okay, yeah, we talked about this. Well, I figured we would do chronological. Yeah. And, um, Anakin, trying to take the ship off of autopilot, says, Oh, try spinning. That's a neat trick. Yippee! And spins around. He manages to get the ship off of autopilot, and then crashes inside of the ship. Now that's pod racing. And then he blows the ship up. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Ugh. And one, another example of awful New droid tactics. That one station controlled all the battle droids at this point in the franchise. So the Gungans, who are getting fucked right now. Also, they're battling on the ground against droids. It's boring. It's, it's boring. It's dumb. Jar Jar's being in, is failing his way into success. It's just obnoxious. It, it's, it, it could have been such a badass action sequence, but it's really poorly done. Yeah, and plus the CG's kind of bad. Yeah. Like, really bad during this part. And so, then, when Anakin blows up the ship and still flies away, screaming, now this is pod racing! Whoopee! As he flies away, all the battle droids on the ground deactivate. Everyone's won. Except, Except one. Except Obi-Wan. Except Obi-Wan. His master just died. So then, we cut back to that. He gets... They start... Then they duel The barrier opens up, and Obi-Wan's, you know, on the offensive. There's some really good, like, the the, 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 the sequence here is actually really good. I really like the, um, like, Darth Maul goes behind his back, spins, and, like, does some stuff, and they're hitting each other. And Obi-Wan has, like, the two, like, overhead blocks. This is the first time I'm like, okay, this is really good choreography. Because there's people who try to lightsaber fight, like, it's like... (laughs) It is... It is nowhere near as easy as it looks. Like, it's really cool. To be fair, we are both men of great weight. Yes, we are. <laughs> I mean, we're not called the powerful thigh guys for no reason. Just because I have powerful thighs, I mean, I'm fat, Dan. Well, how else did we get our powerful thighs? Leg day at the gym. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Ty. <laughs> but yeah. It, yeah, it is very hard to... <laughs> it is way harder than it looks to choreograph an awesome fight scene. His lightsaber gets knocked away. Yes. Oh, he Obi-Wan also cut Maul's saber in half at that time. Yeah, and then his gets knocked away, and then he... 
falls. He gets pushed back into the hole and grabs onto the edge. Yeah, he's holding onto like he's not holding onto the edge, but he's like a little down on a yeah, on like a weird, on like a weird like circle thing, like on a thing that's in the. I don't know. What I don't is. know what the fuck it I is. Know, I don't know the correct term for it. It's like a weird thing jutting out of the side. Pretend it's a giant bolt holding everything together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's holding yeah. there. He's standing there. Maul is Maul standing up there. Maul standing up there, swiping at the edge to intimidate him, and like sending sparks down to him, basically. And what? And what does Obi Wan do, guys? What does Obi Wan do? He just drops. He's like, I want to be with my, I want to be with my brother now. End of franchise. End of franchise. No, but he pulls up. What? And then he uses the force. And what does he do? Does he sucker punch him in the face like it would have been cool to do? No. He jumps over him, cuts him in half. And Maul falls down the hole to his death. Air quotes. Permanent death. He never comes back. Not a single time. Never. He doesn't get spider legs. He's not in another film. Nothing happens. He's not in Rebels. He's not in Clone Wars. He's not in Solo. He dies here, everyone. He dies. Just, just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. He's dead. Darth Maul is fucking dead. Just like Qui-Gon. <laughs> And little Annie's dreams of his mom being free. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so then, Obi-Wan goes and tends to his master as he dies. And in Qui-Gon's final... Qui-Gon's not dead dead, but he's dead. No, yeah, he's in his final moments, is what I'm saying. And, and in Qui-Gon's last moments, he says... I don't remember what he said. What did he say, Dan? Train the boy. Train the boy. Promise me you'll train the boy. And Qu- and Obi-Wan's like, you know, almost crying. And he's like, I will. I will, master. I'll do anything for that wizard, Annie. <laughs> I'll do anything for Kitster. And, and then yeah. we have Qui Gon's funeral, which is very Game, Game of, of Thrones. <laughs> I'm like, it's like he was a White Walker. They're burning him alive. Like, what are you doing? That, They're all a room. Cremation is a very cremation. common practice. Yeah, I'm sure it was in Qui Gon's will. It was a sad time. And then after the funeral, Obi Wan has a conversation with Yoda where he's like, "I'm gonna. Tr- Am I missing something? I think it's a line on your notes, actually." That Yoda oh. says during the funeral. Yeah, I, I forgot. My notes went to the next page. <laughs> Always two there are. No more, no less. But which one was killed? A master or an apprentice. And where, then... <laughs> where you first get introduced to the rule of two. Yes. The first time in canon, then I'm pretty sure they said it. Yeah. And then it immediately... Makes him realize there's another Sith out there. It immediately pans over to Palpatine's face. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, we already knew that Maul was the apprentice because earlier in the movie, Sidious kept saying he's my apprentice, and Maul kept yeah. calling him master. Mm-hmm. We uh, we knew there was. We apprentice. knew it was the apprentice that died, but, but they, they this, don't. This first time they realize there's a bigger threat looming at large. <clears throat> we also then we have a conversation with Anakin and no, not Anakin, Obi Wan and Yoda, where Obi Wan's like, "I'm gonna train the boy." It was Qui Gon's dying wish. I don't give a shit what you say. <laughs> I've been doing this for my master, and Yoda's obviously against it. He's worried about Anakin. Everyone's against it. He's worried about what Anakin could become. Rightfully so, but like, you gotta do what you, Obi-Wan's gotta do what he's gotta do? And, what? No, I was just saying, stop moving the paper. Oh. It's not that bad. No, but I mean, it can get picked up, and it can overpower some quieter places. I'm just saying, nah. I'm editing, boy, I care about the audio. Yes. Well, I can't not touch the paper for two hours. No, 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 I, no, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, and then... To yeah, pet peeve. There's a party. There's a party. Yeah, then. they have a big-ass parade, and the last line of the film is Boss Nass holding... Wait, 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 one more thing before the last line. Before the film. Okay, okay. We get Mace Windu, but it's not Samuel. <laughs> there's a shot of them walking on the streets or wherever. Where there's all the Jedi. There's Mace Windu, but it's not Samuel Jackson. It is... <laughs> It is not even a guy who even remotely looks like Mr. Jackson. Only similarities to have is they're both bald, you know? That's not it. <laughs> look it up if you don't know it. Look up... I- I'm sure you could look up fake Windu or something and it'll show up. Yeah. Well, yeah, party Please time, find baby. that. But you know what? I'll, if, I, if I remember, I'll put an image up on screen of it right now. Yeah. Because it is beautiful. And it's party time, guys. It's party time. Padme and Anakin have a weirdly sexual stare at each other. <laughs> Padme and Anakin... Or disgusting. I get they're only five years apart, but when it's this young, it's that's a pretty it's big gap. Yeah, five years apart is not bad when you're 21. But when one of them's nine... When one of them's nine and one was 14, possibly 16, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's pretty fucking gross. But the last line of the film, 
Boss Nass holds up a fucking electric snow globe and screams, PEACE! And at long last, the credits finally roll. Merry Christmas to us. We can stop watching this film. Oh, thank God. It was a it was a journey that it was a mixed bag. No, (laughs) mixed mixed implies there's equally amount of good as bad. There's more bad. No, 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 not necessarily. In my opinion, yes. Mixed just implies that there are good and bad. It's like eighty to ninety. There's like three good things. It's like eighty to ninety (laughs) percent bad. I guess it's not very mixed. It's not. It's like it's like the it's like the the fucking every flavored beans in Harry Potter. They always get the gross ones. It's like. When your mom makes that stuffing on Thanksgiving and she just forgets to put all the good ingredients in it and it's just fucking cornbread with some, some like really hard and gross cornbread. You know? Is this a personal experience? No, I was trying to think of a, a like a... A Midwestern good old boy like something comparison. That, I didn't work out, honestly. I No, I, I get what you're saying. It's just like forgetting the main ingredients of the... It's like making a cake but without flour. It's, chick- it's like making chicken pot pie without any chicken. It's just all the vegetables and all the nasty stuff. Nice crust, tastes good, okay filling, and then, and yeah, it's 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 quite good. Um, yeah. Also, he has a rat tail at the end. We didn't mention that. And yeah, it's fun time. Yeah, he takes after Obi Wan and gets a little rat tail at the end. It's pretty. Yeah. It's, it's it's honestly like it's disgusting because the rat tail looks gross, but it's kind of adorable. I guess. Taken after his master. It's adorable until him and Padme get real disgusting and flirty and weird. But yeah, the that's the movie. Overall, yeah. pretty bad. Overall, pretty bad. It has a couple nuggets of good Almost. stuff. A lot of great concepts. Yes. Dan, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> yes. We watched the movie. What's the theme of this movie, Dan? What's the big picture of this movie? What's its role in the saga? World building. World building. The big idea would probably be origins, right? Mm-hmm. People's beginnings, trying to figure out who we... Like, the origins of Anakin, origins of Palpatine. Origins of... Even Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Say, Padme. It's just like, we're... Everyone trying to figure out, out what their Figuring out where people came is. from yeah. before the original trilogy. And in concept, it's a cool idea. And it's only... Wait, in concept, are taxes ever cool? Well, lit, lit, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? The concept of having this little intro to everyone, to everyone that's important, to the Emperor, to Vader. It's an interesting idea, and it's something that I definitely like in concept. In this movie in particular, it's just executed extremely poorly by going through the tax route. You yeah. know? Like, oh yeah, that's what people really want to see in their Star Wars. Oh, give me some taxes, give me some charger, baby. It's also a weird combination when they decide to go with the whole tax plot line, but then also make it way more focused at, like, kids. Yeah. It's a weird, like, juxtaposition. Honestly, someone's got to teach teach the kids how to do taxes and balance a checkbook early, because the local schools don't do that shit. Don't teach us anything interesting. Okay. So, it is time to rank the movie. We will be... During the course of the um, podcast, we will be all the. We're going to be like I said. We're going through all the movies, all the show. Not all the shows, all the movies. And at the end of each show, we will rank the movie in the Star Wars universe, and we will rank the best la- the light, the best lightsaber fight. We will rank them and decide which ones are the best. Dan, where does Phantom Menace rank among the Star Wars movies? Uh, it's one because it's the only one we got. Yes. <laughs> For <laughs> are we going to talk about the the debate of where our general consensus lies? You talking about of the film? Like you and me personally have a different position for this film. We don't t- need to talk about it this week. Okay, so we'll just talk about it next week. Yeah. Okay. Well, when we're ranking them. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. It's the fr- it's number one. It's number one and number zero. Yeah, it's number... it's both the it's both the best and the worst that we've watched in this review. Yeah, <laughs> and best lightsaber fight. There's only one. It's obvious which one it is for this movie. Yes, and that the lightsaber fight we're going with for this movie is Maul versus Obi Wan versus Qui Gon. Yes, and then we will be ranking those against the lightsaber best lightsaber fight from each movie. Honestly, that might be the only part of this whole movie that'll actually have any point of contention in any of the rankings that we do. 
What, if it's the best lightsaber fight? Like, I, 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 like, I don't think it'll be number one by the time we're done, but it'll be probably up there. Oh, yeah. It's going to have a nice journey. It'll least. be above the lightsaber fight in episode four, right? Yeah. So, overall, best movie so far in the franchise? Worst movie so far in the franchise. Worst movie so far in the franchise. It's bad. Overall, the only thing I like about this movie is that it's Star Wars. Yes. The lightsaber fighting, that's not it. There's some cool, funny moments because they're cringy, like... Are you an angel? Yeah. Yeah. As we've said so many times, so many cool concepts done through taxes, poor acting, poor, poorly aged CG. Yeah, poor acting. Only act- good acting is Obi-Wan. Yeah. And Padme's not bad. It's just... It's not good, but it's, like, intentional. Yeah. Or they can well, at least say that. You could... Yeah, I don't think it's intentional, but you could at least frame it as intentional. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, Dan. So, so that brings us through the review portion. Well, uh, you know, did you have a good time rewatching this movie? Yeah, you know, I, for me, it's Star Wars. Yeah, it's always fun watching Star Wars with your friends and just shooting the shit about. Yeah, it, making fun of it, especially, especially this one. Especially because we've seen these movies so much, we don't have to worry about being quiet the whole time. And, yeah, it's a fun movie. You know, it. Even when they're bad, it's a fun time. Now it's, now it's time, guys, for the final segment of this episode. We will be doing this after every episode. It's our award ceremony. It's our Medals of Bravery. For what Medals of Bravery, you say? What is that? Dan, tell them what Medals of Bravery are. Medals of Bravery are, in fact, the medals given out at the Yavin Celebration Ceremony at the end of A New Hope. That is episode four. Yeah. The medals... <laughs> all you schmucks at home that don't... The medals know. constructed of, I believe, erodium is the medal... It's a gold little metal. Kyber? No. No, no not, not Kyber. Kyber. Not Kyber. That's lightsaber. That's lightsabers. What? Erodium, I think is what it's made out of. It's the little metal that they get. Those are the medals of bravery. Right. And we have three categories this week. We'll probably add more as time goes on. Maybe, possibly. We'll always have these three for sure, though. Yes. Number first category. That's a fun one. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. This is the category for the scene in the movie where that we're like, what the fuck is going on? How did this make the movie? Why did this make the final cut? Now, this can be a variety of things. Could it be a poorly done scene? It could be a poorly written scene. It could be poorly just not be important to the plot. Yeah, it could be anything. Basically, this is co- sort of the quote unquote worst scene of the film. Yes. Or in exact words, like, how, how did, did this happen? happen? We're smarter than this. And this one, this the one, second we saw it, we both yeah. knew <laughs> exactly. I'm going to have to find a picture of it and put it on screen. Yes, of course. <clears throat> At one hour, 42 minutes, and 32 seconds into the film. Did you actually find the exact time? When I paused, I just took the time code. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is a shot of a Gungan on like, this head statue looking out for the droid army to come. No, no, looking out for Padme and them to for come. For Padme and them to come. They're looking, and then little Annie's there. He is the worst unfinished CGI I've ever seen in my life. Like, the CGI in this movie's bad. But this one like, didn't even look like it was finished. It looked like we had to pause the movie because it was so fucking bad. It, like, got a couple seconds past, and we're like, no, 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 go back, go back. Like, how did that, how did they allow that? How did that pass testing? You're literally focused. Like, your whole point of the movie was like, oh, CGI, big for the time, good CGI. Compared to all, like, CGI doesn't hold up in this movie, but to what we saw, this was horrendous. It was inexcusably poor. Yes. It looked worse than a PlayStation 1 game. How? How did this happen? It was... Oh, my God. This is, there's no debate here. That wins the how did how did this happen award. How did this happen for? Okay. Next award is the That's So Wizard moment, which is... The exact opposite. Which is the exact opposite, which was the... As the kids are like to say, That's So Wizard, That's So Cool. What was the best moment of this movie, best scene of this movie, Dan? I gotta say it's the lightsaber fight. I gotta say it's when Anakin and Padme talk to each other at the end. I will punch you in the face. No, it's it's obviously the lightsaber it's fight. Ob- if, if we gotta be a little bit more specific, then it's the part when they get to the Dual laser things. doors. Yeah. So the rest of the fight. Uh, yeah, I want to say just the whole fight in general. But well, yeah, we're going to go with that. Yeah, yeah. The whole fight in general. It's but, the only great part of this film. Yeah, purely great. That's an easy one. And That's then, a super easy one. Yeah, it's, going forward, we're going to have a lot more. I was about to that. say, well, you know, in this one, we're going through the awards a little fast. But in future episodes, 
there will probably be ones where we have points of contention and I'll actually talk about it. Well, it's just this one. I think we will on this one. There are two obvious ones. Well, for scene in the movie? No, for, no, no. For, for like the previous two categories, they were both really way obvious. Way too obvious, yeah. And our final category is the chosen one, which is who stole the show? Who was the MVP in this movie? Which character was the best character in this movie and most valuable to this film? I feel like there's three options. I was going to say, do you want to go first or should I go first? I'll go first. I'm not, I don't have it fully decided, but I think the three people are Obi-Wan, Padme, and Qui-Gon. We are the people we spend the most time with. And I really enjoy the Padme twist. The acting's, like I said, it's not there, but also it's possibly because of the thing. But also, she's just, I like her dynamic with the group. I like the whole you're an angel thing. It just cracks me up. She's probably the least likely to get it. Obi-Wan because... He's Obi-Wan. He's Obi-Wan. He he did a great job mimicking Alec Guinness the best he could. And like He's the best part of the prequels in general. Yes. The whole thing. And he's just... It should be no surprise that Obi-Wan would be up there if you watched the first episode of our podcast. Obi-Wan ranked high in our favorite characters for both of us. Did we do that on that podcast? Yeah. We talked about like our favorite like couple characters. Oh. It wasn't the top ten, it was just, we were talking about a no, couple of things. the top ten favorites. was a four-hour podcast that you guys will never see. Yes. And then, if you do see it, there will be a problem. <laughs> then I will find you. But and then, yeah. obviously, Qui-Gon, because, I think Qui-Gon's also with Obi-Wan. Like, their relationship's the best. The, like, I love how Qui-Gon constantly is... Gray. Is gray and constantly doing things he probably shouldn't be doing as a Jedi. But because, like, the, like the Jedi are flawed, so they have some pretty dumb rules, so... Qui-Gon just realizes that the will of the Force isn't so black and white. Yeah. I think those are the only three people to give it to you. For me, the only one who I can see for this movie specifically is Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon? Yes. Mm. I thought you might have went with Palpatine. He's not in enough of this one. Yeah. I'll fight for him being MVP in a future movie. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, in this one, Palpatine, I would say, is not in it enough. Despite him being my favorite character, he's he doesn't, you know, he's not had his best here. Yeah, he's, we're just getting to know him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight for him hard in a future episode, though. That'll be a debate. For That'll sure. be a hell of a debate. But in this one... Do you one, think Anakin will ever win the MVP? I don't think so. I don't think he will either. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I like Anakin fine in episode three, but in episode three, there's already two other strong contenders. I also like Anakin fine in episode one. Hell yeah! But Qui-Gon, I feel, is one of the more underrated characters in Star Wars as well. Also, I don't, we can't give us him ever again, too. Yeah. Like, Obi-Wan... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Obi-Wan wins both of the next two. You know what it's I mean? It's possible, yeah. Like, like, and out of obviously out of the three movies, uh, this is honestly, his weakest one. Honestly, Obi-Wan could win episode four. We're, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we're getting okay. way ahead of ourselves there. Honestly, Dan? I'm going to say Qui-Gon. That's my vote. Um, yeah. I agree. I feel like this only one we can give it to him, too, and he deserves it. He's it, such an underrated character. Yeah, I feel like he's so... Un, like, no one ever talks about Qui-Gon. And he's, like, the main part of this movie. He yeah. pre pretty much steers the movie. Plus, he's part of one of my favorite dynamics. The Dooku-Qui-Gon-Obi-Wan dynamic. Yeah, which will be explored later. Yes, will be explored when Dooku is introduced. Which kind of Dooku, you ask? Watch next episode. If you've never seen Star Wars yeah. before. So... How did this happen? We are smarter than this. Goes to dumb CGI droid. Gungan. Gungan, you're right. <laughs> the that's a wizard moment. Duel of the Fates. Easily. That's all we gotta call it. Duel of the Fates. We should probably make some cool graphics for these. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to work on it. Yeah. And then, the chosen one is Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon Jinn. He's the only one fighting for Anakin, even though... We all know how no one wants out. to. But he's just doing what he thinks is right and do go and live by his code. And that's all you can do. Very respectable. Yeah, that's all you can do as a person. Respect. respect man, respect for that guy. And, and like you were saying, his relationship with Obi-Wan is so fascinating. Yeah. I'm going to probably read the Obi-Wan Qui-Gon book. Yeah. Because I, I love that relationship so much. I love my book, book there. <laughs> <laughs> Qui-Gon book. Yeah. That's my favorite MVP. So, so those were the Medals of Bravery. Battles, battles, battles. Bravery, bravery, bravery. Just have Chewbacca screaming like at the end of A New Hope. Yeah, so, Dan. That's Ooh, the boy. show. That was quite a long one. That was a Star Destroyer of a podcast we did here. Yeah. So, 
that was our show, guys. Let us know what you think. Tell us, let, Suggest, us know if you, let us know if you like the longer episodes. Suggest topics for awards we can give out. Like, so, tell us what... Anything... Are there any topics we missed? Is there anything about the movie? Watch... Be, next episode's gonna be about Attack of the Clones. Watch it. Write in questions about it. Yeah. You know, do it... Just tell us what you want us to... Anything in Attack of the Clones you have a strong thought on that you want us to talk about? Send it to us. Does, does Padme and Anakin seem super rapey? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll find out. <laughs> we will, in fact, find out. Yes. But yeah, make sure you like if you enjoyed. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Yeet, yeet notifications. I don't like the bell icon. I don't, never, I've never used it once in my life for anything. I just think it's unnecessary and dumb. But hit yeah. that bell icon regardless. Right. Leave a comment for anything you want us to review. Not even just about episode two. Leave a comment for anything in Star Wars you want us to talk about. We want your feedback. Let us know what was bad. Let us know what was good. Tell us if you want to do us the best butts in Star Wars. Let us know if, you know, you just fucking hate us. Yeah, we'd love any feedback. Is I just want to know that other humans are out there. <laughs> you guys, this has been the episode. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far. We'll see you next week with Attack of the Clones. And are you an angel?